roll not too long ago, my friend. You're right, B.A. It feels like just yesterday. And if you need a steady presence and voice on the player side, it really can help a team through some rough stretches throughout the year. A look at the 76ers starting group. Maxi runs point with Melton at the two. Robert Covington is out there with Joel Embiid. And it's Oubre in at the three. Embiid is screen on George. Maxi with it. Harden picks him up. Here's Embiid. Yep, that one goes. Yeah, getting aggressive in the paint. Look at Joel putting his size to work. Ooh, and Leonard throws it down. He almost brought the basket down on top of himself. Oh, there's hang time, and then there's a time to hang. Outside Maxi. Here's Embiid. Perfect night so far. Two for two. Now you want to get him going as soon as possible. Great way for him to start this game. And we know once he gets in the rhythm, he's a really tough guy to stop. For three, George. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. I like to see Kawhi looking for his teammates, keeping the offense flowing. Embiid is screen on George. Maxi passes to Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. And once you get the height advantage from there, no need to mess around. For Los Angeles, they've gone three of three so far from the floor. George passes to Leonard and stolen by Covington. Outside Maxi. Covington, a screen on Tucker. Maxi played it in with a nice touch off the window. Just taking it right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. Wow, that's a defensive breakdown. Can't do that against good scores. And then Harden with the jam. And you know, you can't underestimate Harden's ability to blow by defenders. It opens things up for him on the offensive side. Embiid a screen on George. Maxi passes to Embiid. Can't hit from in close. Ooh, old school right there. No easy buckets. And they go to the intentional foul. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. And the 76ers making a change here. Heald's checked in. Covington against George. The three is up. Perfect night so far. Two for two. When Paul George is on the court, the defense has to be aware of him on the perimeter. Embiid is screen on George. Maxi attacking. And it's flushed down. A nice jam. Ooh, putting on a show for the fans. Going up for the graceful reverse. Oh, that had a little extra sauce on it, Grant. And there's a whistle. That goes on Robert Covington. That's his first foul. Harden from outside. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. Wow, the vision of P.J. Tucker made that play possible. And so it's Maxi with it. He brings it up for Philadelphia. They trail by six. Into the lane. And that one is stuffed right through. And B.A., if you let him, he will do damage. No resistance, you pay. But the defense has to feel real embarrassed right now. They totally got school on that highlight reel play. Kyle Lowry's checked in for Maxi. Here's man. Pass to George. Inside. Here's Tucker. Nice assist and nice finish. Solid play all the way around. If you're the defense, that can't happen. Tucker got ideal positioning inside. Here's Lowry. Oh, plenty of contact on that shot. Officials call the foul, and he'll take two free throws now. James Harden picks one up. Well, that was clearly a foul. All right, guys, some stats here. The scoring breakdown for Los Angeles. They came out firing from deep. It's always good for a team's confidence when you can start a game that high. And I just love playing on teams like this, passing teams. You can tell they really like playing with each other, and hopefully they keep this up. Now here's George. Six points for him. Down to five on the shot clock. Man, misses. The 76ers have gone six of seven and looking good. Embiid a screen on Tucker. Lowry, good. And there is that patience of Lowry with the pick and roll. Took what the defense gave him. It's George on the drive. Yeah, he tried to gain position, but couldn't quite get there. 
14. That's good from George. Paul George. Two shots. It's both from the stripe. That's what he does. Rock solid at the line. For Philadelphia, they've got seven of eight in the basket. Lowry surveys the D. Pass to Embiid. And Embiid with the power jam. Woo, that was big time. I mean, a dunk contest finish from Embiid. This guy can fly. Leonard against Embiid. Ooh, and Leonard throws it down. Sky high, one of his advantages as a undersized four. And we've got 28 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Harden against Lowry. And it's Harden who pulls down the rebound. This is the shot you want right at the rim. He just couldn't deliver. Out to Leonard. Pass to George. Back to Leonard. Ooh, and Leonard throws it down. Nice recognition there by Paul George. Just getting the ball to the open man. And so it's Los Angeles leading by six as we wrap up the quarter. What has them in front? And for those of you just tuning in, second quarter action is where we are. And before we move on, what do you think about what we've seen from the Clippers? I'll tell you what, throughout the first, they did a great job of just running their offense. Credit the game plan coming in. They've identified the right matchups, and the execution is there. So on the floor for Philadelphia to kick off the second quarter. Maxie runs point with Melton at the two. Robert Covington is out there with Buddy Heald, and it's Reed in at the five spot. Wise motto, whoever gets the boards, gets the extra position, gets the win. Here's Maxie, down low. Leonard with a double team. Here's Reed, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Credit their discipline. They've been working for high percentage shots. The Clippers in the lead. George drives in, and the jam by George. So slippery when he's driving the ball. Paul George makes it look easy. Time now to hear from our reporter, Ali LaForce. Joel Embiid talked about setting the tone. He said it's not easy being a leader. I'm not an off-the-court guy. I'm more reserved. But on the court, I show up. That's the way I like to lead, dominating on the court, offensively, defensively, and try to bring everybody along with me. Brian? He does it well, for sure. Ali, thanks for that. George scanning the floor. Shot clock at five. The Clippers got a hurry. Late clock here. And slam dunk by Tucker. This is how you make a statement. PJ throws it down hard. Here's Maxi. Rips it home off a terrific move. A dynamic finish, then decides to hang out a little for good measure. <laughs> yep, that's the exclamation point right there. George passes to Leonard. Back to George. And George with the jam. You can see why this team trusts PG with the ball in his hands. He's capable of taking over on any given night. Here's Maxi. Oh, there's a killer two-hand slam. All he needed was a little separation. So effective. Boy, cleared the path, put him in position for a prime time dunk. That's a big time move and a big time finish. Smitty, let me ask you. You think the NBA's gotten less physical in recent years? It has, B.A. It makes sense. The game's called tighter. They want more flow. A hard foul now could be a flagrant. So guys have to play careful. And Philadelphia calls time here. Russell Westbrook, he's checked in for Los Angeles. All right, for those just joining us, we're almost two and a half minutes into the second. And slam dunk by Tucker. And remember, James Harden is usually a front runner in the league in assists. He has great vision. Pass to Leonard. Tucker with a screen on heel. Here's Leonard. And count 
that. Two points and a chance for one more at the line. And I respect the strategy. Despite the sizable lead, you got to stay in attack mode. You want to stay aggressive right at the rim, driving another nail into the coffin. Lowry against Harden. Lowry, the pass to Embiid. Martin outside. Driving in. Back to Embiid. Two minutes remain in the first half. Two minutes. Hey, in six attempts, he's made five. Talk about efficiency. Woo, just selling the defense on the pump fake. Leonard looking around. To the inside. Oh, Leonard leaves no room for error. There is a reason Russell Westbrook ranks among the greatest ever in terms of assists. He excels at getting the ball to his open teammates. It's Lowry with a drive. Yep, count it. Lowry's got six. That's a well-timed, well-coordinated play. Comes right off the pick for the lay-in. Pass to man. Westbrook against Lowry. Westbrook, the pass to Harden. Leonard with a screen on Melton. Four on the clock. Harden finds Leonard. Shoots it from the high post. And again, it's the Clippers. Kawhi Leonard has been on fire. He is totally locked in on the offensive end. Here's Lowry. Out to the right wing. Outside heel. No good on the three. And he probably thought he was going to bury that one. Leonard passes to Harden. Leonard with a screen on Lowry. Harden against Lowry. Back to Leonard. And there's a whistle. That goes on DeAnthony Melton. That'll be a second foul of the game. And we've got 28 seconds left to play in the first half. Leonard with a screen on heel. Leonard outside. Clock at six. Jacks up a three. Leonard! A threat from deep. A lethal shooter, Kawhi Leonard, forcing the defense to go out and guard him. Here's Lowry. Outside heel. Embiid a screen on Westbrook. Heel passes to Lowry. To the paint. Oh, Embiid packs it down. We've seen that from Lowry for a long time. A fantastic passer of the basketball. It could go. Oh, and he just knocked down the buzzer beater. Makes his selection just in time. Well done. Thank you, Allie. Good stuff. We will be right back after this break for the beginning of the third quarter. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. It's been one outstanding game from Kawhi Leonard. The numbers say it all. He spent the first half playing efficient ball. And it's not like everything's been at the rim. There's been a number of jump shots along the way. Kawhi Leonard out there with P.J. Tucker. Then there's George. Then it's Terrence Mann. And it's Harden in at the point. That's the group starting the second half for Ty Lue. Double team on Leonard. Let's a three fly, and it's Harden. That time on the assist by Leonard. Harden's got eight. A lights out three point shooter. Harden loves to take and make them. Back to Maxi. Right side Ubre. Shot clock at six. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. He misses the free throw. So for the Clippers, Tice is checked in for Leonard. Powell comes in for Mann. And it's Westbrook in for James Harden. And Philadelphia also making a switch. Embiid's checked in. Covington, a screen on Westbrook. Maxey passes to Embiid. And an intentional foul right there. First personal foul. Second team foul. 
And with a little over a minute gone by, the second half is underway. Screen by Embiid. For three, Maxi knocks down the long J. He's got 15. Easy look when the defender isn't fighting over the screen. Reason why it takes extra energy to do it. You have to trust your defensive rotations, but it's worth it. There's Tice with a three. Yes, and it's George picking up the assist. Tice has got his first three points of the game. Exchanging buckets from downtown. That's been a staple of tonight's game. Hey, players love competition, and the fans love it as well. Let's check in with our reporter, Allie LaForce. There was a time when star players were traded for a few picks and some quality bets. Now, a new paradigm, teams mortgaging their futures for a star and sending away their first-round picks for the better part of a decade. Brian, it's clear for teams going all-in, you have to push all of your chips in the middle. High stakes for sure, Allie. Thank you. Covington passes to Maxi. Hey, how's that for an answer? Right back with the dunk. And just a lack of fight right now on the defensive end. Right? At least on that slam it was. That's one way to let a team back in the game. Yeah, defensively, your mantra at this point has to be no easy buckets. Not sure why he committed the intentional foul. No purpose. I think everyone's a little confused. But weird plays happen. Heels checked in for the Sixers. Here's Powell. Here he goes. And Powell with the stuff. Attacking the rim with aggression. Norman Powell putting pressure on the interior D with his driving and finishing abilities. Fires in the triple. This is the shot you want to get him. An open look from range. George drives in. And the jam by George. What a silky move by Paul George. He really had the ball on a screen. Here's Maxi. And he drains another one. He's now 10 of 11 from the field. Yeah, he's leading the charge for them. But let's be honest, he needs more help if they're going to get out in front. The reason why is not just scoring. It's the way he's doing it. Efficient. That's what you need at this point in the game. One sign of a great playmaker hitting his man in stride. Outside Maxi. Outside heel. One twenty-five left in the third. Just five to shoot. Here's Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. And there's the process at work. Embiid rolls off the pick and right into scoring position. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. in for the Clippers. Harden comes in for Paul George. A minute 15 left in the third quarter. Outside Harden. To the middle. Tice, a screen on Lowry. And then Harden with the jam. Yeah, just a smart call by Harden. Using the pick to shake off the defense and get himself a look. Oubre, a screen on Westbrook. Here's Lowry. Pass to Oubre. Out to heel. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Harden comes to help. Here's Reed. And here's another one for the Sixers. Showing great awareness and quick decision-making. That's how you handle getting double-teamed. Powell outside. Pass to Tice. Now Harden. Back to Tice. Tice sets a screen. Rebound by the 76ers. Healed from outside. And the 76ers, another three. Yet yeah, no hesitation from the veteran heel. A dangerous score in these catch-and-shoot situations. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. 
Three-pointer, Harden sinks the trade. Harden's got 13 now. He saw he had an opening, and Harden took it. And so it's Los Angeles, up 14 as we wrap up the quarter. Built. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works, or if it's more of the same for the first three quarters. Taking a look at the 76ers. Maxi runs point with Melton at the two. Joel Embiid is out there with Robert Covington. And it's healed in at the small forward position. Melton against Harden. And there's a whistle. That goes on DeAnthony Melton. That'll get him his fourth foul of the game. And Harden gets the double team. Back to Leonard. Shoots over Melton. And there's Leonard on the assist by Harden. Harden's got six assists now in the game. No doubt in my mind that Kawhi Leonard shoots with the utmost confidence. Maxi passes to Embiid. And it's good. And they stop the action here. They're using their coach's challenge to see if they can get this foul overturned. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these personal foul calls still disputed even after the video re The previous play is under review. But at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure they get it right. The ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with Allie LaForce. Guys, over the last break, I listened to Tyron Lue address the team. He said, keep it going, guys. Ride this wave of momentum. We're playing great right now. We can't let up. Guys, back to you. Okay, thanks, Allie. And you can see Harden is feeling it, which is why he's being so aggressive on offense. Puts up a three, and that's good. Maxi for three. Maxi's got 24 points. Man, he's been on point, not forcing things, getting the most of his looks within the flow. Out to Leonard. From the arc. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Great perimeter D. Gave a good shooter absolutely no room to operate. Embiid passes to Melton. Outside heel. He takes it in. Pass to Embiid. Embiid muscles through the contact. Excellent focus there from Embiid. Just pushes past the contact. It's George with the drive. And he makes it on the layup. And the Clippers lead by 12. And this is what you want to do when you've got a big lead. You must stay aggressive. I'm impressed with their intensity tonight. They came in focused and they executed. And the jam by George. Outstanding dunk from Paul George. This is why the defense can't let him get too deep. Outside Maxi. Pass to Embiid. Yes! Embiid from in close. Rock the baby. Working the size advantage inside. Outside Harden. If you're just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. If given the space, Harden's not afraid to take it to the rim. Maxi surveys. Off target with the three. They can take their time if they want. Yes, you have to regroup. Make sure you get a good shot. 
What? Wait. Hey, dunks are always for the big boy. <laughs> Emphatic move by the point guard. Forget just landed in. He wanted to make a statement. He is a scoring machine right now, but he needs more support from his teammates if they want to win this one. The Clippers have gotten almost all of their shots to fall in the fourth. Six of seven. Harden. Oh, he's been lethal. Connecting again, making him nine for nine. I love it. When Harden shoots, he commits. A little contact isn't going to upset his mechanics. Maxi passes to Embiid. All right, guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the Clippers? Something I've noticed is how aggressive they've been on driving the basketball. Time and time again, they've turned cracks in the defense into points. Yeah, and their team-first approach is another thing you have to like. And they've had great ball movement and are getting a lot of points off assists. Oh, and he got fouled. Well, maybe a little bit of a use-it-or-lose-it situation with the coach's challenge. Probably won't make a difference to the outcome, but they still want to review the call. People were worried that this would slow the action down. But with so many close calls in every game, the NBA was... Previous play is over. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back them up and make the refs take. After review, the ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. And the first one at the line is good. No good on the second free throw. The 76ers have gone 5 of 8 from the field so far in the fourth. And they were really able to find the mismatches they wanted and exploit those all night. Great execution from the players and coaching staff for the Clippers. When you look at their assist totals, you can see why it was easier for them to score. The ball was really popping tonight. And good things seem to happen when you're patient and willing to make the next pass. Their offense has flowed really well. And one player just stole the show tonight, doing everything for his team. A monster night for Kawhi Leonard. He didn't miss out on much of the action tonight. He was magnetized to the ball and did everything he could to contribute for his team on both ends of the floor. Heel the screen on George. Here's Maxi. Pass to Covington. Back to Maxi. Lays it up and banks it in. Maxi's got 30. That's a well-timed, well-coordinated play. Comes right off the pick for the lay-in. And stolen by Covington. Maxi on the wing. Defended by Harden. Fires the three. Rebounded by Kawhi Leonard. And so it's Leonard who brings up the ball for the L.A. Clippers. And the jam by George. That's an inspired ball club. They fought hard, and during the most important moments, they made big plays. Especially during this last run, which ultimately put the game away. <laughs> hey, nice work of tracking the foul from deep. He'll shoot three. Shooting for Philadelphia. And he's good on the second. At the line for three. The last one's off. They'll settle for two. Pass to man. Back to Leonard. George for three. Yep, it's good. This is.
Teams that are all too familiar with one another going head to head. VA, they'll play four times this year, and even that doesn't seem like enough because there is no love lost between these two franchises. It never seems to matter who's on the roster. There's just distaste for one another. And a look at the starters for the Knicks. Dante DiVincenzo out there with Jalen Brunson. Then it's OG Ananobi, then it's Julius Randle, and it's Achua in at the five, roaming the paint. Well, there's an unpredictability to his offensive game. He is always keeping the defense off balance. And he gets it to go. Yeah, don't be fooled by the height, guys. Brunson is a terrific finisher inside. Embiid, a screen on Ananobi, down low. The kick out to Maxi from deep three-point land. Yes, and it's Embiid picking up the assist. Maxi's got five points. Yeah, you want to get him going as soon as possible. Great way for him to start this game. He's a guy who, if he gets hot, he can carry your offense for long stretches. The 76ers have gone two of three from the floor. Well, just two playoff appearances for the Knicks in the last decade, but two and three seasons for Tom Thibodeau. And B.A., I think you can certainly say in two of those three seasons, this is an organization and a team that exceeded expectation. And now you have pieces like Mitchell Robinson, the young big who is such a presence at the rim, and Jalen Brunson triggering all the action from the point guard position. Well, you add another piece or two and look out for the New York Knicks. And then Embiid with the dunk. And there's the process at work. Embiid rolls off the pick and right into scoring position. Brunson on the drive. And the layup is good off the glass. Just taking it right to the rim. And no one was there to greet him. I think defensively, that is not the way you want to start. Giving up high percentage looks, that doesn't typically end well. Oh, stolen by Ananobi. Three on three. DiVincenzo, pass to Ananobi. Maxi against Randall. Achua with a screen on Melton. Here's Brunson. Connects on the foul line jumper. He's got six. I think in today's NBA, you've got to be a three-level scorer. The midi is good for Jalen Brunson. Maxi surveys. To the paint. Here's Embiid. Back to Maxi. Pass to Embiid. Stolen by Ananobi. And here's Achua driving inside. Achua with the dunk. Well, as always, Jalen Brunson making the right play. This guy loves to set up his teammates. Here's Maxi. Up and in on the layup. Maxi's got seven points. And despite the size mismatch, getting a little aggressive down there in the paint. Some guys just relish the challenge. Find a way, and he does. Now here's Randall. Uses the glass on the layup. Boy, there was plenty of contact down low, but Randall assertive and able to find the finish. With his size and skill set, Julius Randall can be a walking mismatch. You put a big man on him, and he will blow right by him. Now, if you go small, he'll drag him to the block. So when Randall is focused and involved, he is a monster to deal with. Six on the shot clock. Here's Maxi. And the powerful one-handed slam. Elevates and detonates the one-hand stuff. Picture perfect. And so it's Brunson who brings up the ball for the New York Knicks. They trail by one. Oh, somehow misses the one-handed flush. Pass to Embiid. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Knicks. The 76ers making a switch here. Lowry's checked in. Number seven. For New York, they've gone five of nine from the floor. Now here's Achua. Randall outside. Back to Achua. Brunson against Melton. Here's the three. And it's Jalen Brunson with a three. He's got nine. Yeah, just masterful use of the pick and roll by Jalen Brunson. Shot ready as soon as he wants to let it fly. And it's Lowry penetrating. Here's Embiid. 
And again, it's Philadelphia. Great chemistry between two teammates. Love the passing. One second separating the shot clock and the game clock. Stolen by Lowry. Now a timeout called by Philadelphia. Timeout, timeout. Inside, Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. Well, I think with his ability to shoot off the dribble, the defense has got to understand how to play Kyle Lowry. He loves these opportunities, and so many of his assists from off these pick and rolls. Now a timeout called by New York. Substitution for your 76ers. Chua for three. And no good. Trying to get that one to fall. Can we remember that Mo Bamba has a 7'10 wingspan? What a performance for Tyrese Maxey. He has been the story for the Philadelphia 76ers. Hunting for opportunities, leading to nine points in the quarter. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out ahead of the second quarter. And some stats here, guys. The scoring breakdown for Philadelphia. They've done a great job establishing an inside presence. Now, that'll open up more options offensively throughout the remainder of the game. And their assist total, also impressive early, creating with the pass and playing for teammates. So on the floor for the Knicks, we've got OG Ananobi. Achua is out there with Julius Randle. Then there's Jalen Brunson, and it's Steven Chenzo in at the shooting guard position. Now here's Lowry. Still without a bucket. And stolen by Brunson. Pass to DiVincenzo. Now Ananobi. DiVincenzo with a screen on heel. Ananobi for three. Rebounded by Heel. The Sixers leading. Here in the second quarter, a little over a minute of play. Hits the trifecta. Any opportunity from three is what Buddy Heald is looking for. Great delivery there. And for Buddy Heald, he became the second fastest player in NBA history to hit 1,500 three-pointers doors. And consider, B.A., only Stephen Curry did it faster. Heald is one of the top three-point shooters in the league. He's got both the volume and the efficiency to prove it. And let's send it over to Allie LaForce. The Knicks are in the nation's media capital, the coach Tom Thibodeau said. I've never felt pressure. I've been at this a long time. I approach it the same way. I put everything I have into each and every day. I'm willing to live with that result. There's no one, no one who studies this team harder than I do. No, he has made the difference for sure. Thanks, Allie. That free throw misses. Well, Doris, looking at the pace of the game now, that has to be a big factor in load management. B.A., there's no doubt that the game is more spread out and it's played at a faster pace. So much, though, goes into that load management discussion that is so volatile at times. Here are the facts, though. People are more aware because of the data we have from medical science that the season is challenging. And so teams are going to manage their greatest resource, which is the players, carefully. Load management is not going anywhere. Well, this is the very definition of Jalen Brunson's game, his ability to get past defenders and create for himself or his teammates. That is nicely done. Now here's Maxie. He's got 11. Healed on the wing. Maxi against Ananobi. And he makes no mistake. Slam dunk. And after putting it down, he dangles from the rim a little. Man, that's borderline taunting right there, Grant. They're playing with a certain swagger right now. DiVincenzo can't hit. That's his shot. And one, I'm sure, he wants back. Outside heel. Oh, got a piece of it. The kick out to Brunson. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Two minutes. 
Here's Achua. Achua with the dunk. <laughs> and when the game is this close, you have to go all out. He certainly understands his role, huh? When the shot goes up, just crashes the offensive glass. And that's so demoralizing to your opponent. To play great defense and have the possession end that way, that's tough to take. Here's Melton. After the basket by New York. Five on the clock. And Maxie gets it to go on the assist from Melton. Maxie's got 15. Earning his money on the interior tonight. That's a nice move. And there's a whistle. That goes on DeAnthony Melton. That's his first foul. And the Knicks making a change here. Hartenstein's checked in. 119 left in the second. Randall is screen on Melton. And here's Brunson from the arc. That one's good. Seven for ten now. Boy, whenever this team has needed a bucket, Jalen Brunson has been there right now in complete command of this ball game. Outside heel. Picked by Covington. Beyond the arc. And it's heel missing. And so Randall will bring it up for the Knicks. Trailing by two. And for some reason, he decided to foul there. Yeah, B.A., that's an odd move. Maybe there's something else behind it. That one's off. We've seen our fair share of NBA players from the U.K. Is Ananobi the most successful, you think? Well, B.A., how about this? I mean, he's the first player from the United Kingdom to win an NBA championship. Back in 2019, he was part of that Raptors uh, championship. And think about this. He has now turned himself into that coveted, elite defensive player on the wing so needed in today's NBA. OG Ananobi is tremendously athletic, and when he plays with this level of aggression, it's hard not to foul him. And it's tied up with that one. Martin, he's checked in for Harris. And that one falls. That puts him up one point in the game now. Philadelphia has gone one of two from deep in the second quarter. Embiid, a screen on Brunson. Melton passes to Embiid. Oh, Embiid with the slam! Another lead change. Give these teams credit. They're really fighting it out. Neither team willing to give an inch, and neither able to seize the momentum. This has been a fascinating one to watch. New York calls timeout. Sixers with some changes. Harris comes in for Heald, and it's Oubre in for Melton. New York has gone two of four from the perimeter in the second so far. Shot clock and game clock separated by less than six seconds. And Burks gets it to go. Really confident handle from Alec Burks. How about the ability to get into the teeth of the defense? And Lowry puts up a deep three. It's rebounded by New York. Here's Hartenstein. No point so far. Hartenstein a screen. Burks passes to Hartenstein. To the left wing. Here's McBride. Oh, it would have counted had it fallen, but it is offline. And we're through the first half of play. Thanks very much, Allie. And folks, we'll be right back to start the second half of this game. Second half of basketball is upon us, and we may be in for an exciting finish based on how close of a game we've seen so far. You look at Jalen Brunson. What a contribution. Through the first two quarters, he's been on fire. Explosive offensive performance. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far, unstoppable. Melton the two with Harris at the three. Robert Covington is out there with Joel Embiid. And it's Maxi in at the one. That's the group for Nick Nurse getting going here in the second half. The control and focus from Embiid. Able to absorb hits from the defense and still finish. Now here's DiVincenzo. 
Brunson surveys. Pass to Achua. Hey, from beyond the arc. The rebound by Embiid. Embiid's got four rebounds now. Brunson against Maxi. Here's Embiid. Yes! Embiid from in close. I love the confidence Embiid plays with, especially this close to the rim. New York trailing. And let's swing it over to the sideline and hear from Alley. Well, Jalen Brunson has been a steadying presence at the point guard spot for the Knicks. Coach Thibodeau said his mind is probably his greatest asset. He's always been that way. He's mastered all the fundamentals, and the game's not too big for him. Brian? Yeah, in either sense of the word, right? All right, Allie, thank you. Good stuff. And a guy who entered the league in a supporting role for us, Jalen Brunson, now a legitimate star. He is, B.A., and consider that this is a man who was drafted in the second round and just kept working, biding his time, and contributing to winning. And the greater the opportunity, the more he has stretched to meet that opportunity. Well, not exactly one of those big, burly power forwards, right? He depends on his leaping ability more than those guys, and it serves him just fine. Here's Maxi. Makes a fantastic move and nails the shot. Maxi's got four points this quarter. Assertive move. You can tell the game's heating up a bit. Pass to Ananobi. That one, no good. Oh, great D that time from Harris. Let's it go from deep. On target from range. And now it's a 5-point 76ers lead. And the coaches rave about Harris in his three-point shooting. Helps his team space the floor. Randall outside. Ananobi finds Brunson. Randall on the screen. Open shot from Brunson. It's hauled in by the Sixers. And unlike some other guys, missing a wide open look won't hurt his confidence at all. Embiid just brushing off the contact inside. Yeah, good things happen when Embiid has the ball in his hands. I mean, this guy can do it all. And here's Brunson from the arc. No luck on that one. Philadelphia has gone three of six from deep so far. Here's Maxi going inside, and he drains another one. He's now 10 of 11 from the field. This team looks so focused out there trying to increase their lead. You know, they can make things much easier on themselves in the fourth if they just have a few more possessions like that. Now a timeout called by New York. And the 76ers with some changes. Heels checked in for Tobias Harris. Oubre comes in for Melton. And it's Lowry in for Maxi. A big group substitution here for New York. Boyan Bogdanovich checked in for Randall. Josh Hart comes in for Ananobi. Burks, he's checked in for DiVincenzo. And it's McBride in for Jalen Brunson. So it's Philadelphia now. After the basket by New York. Lowry to pass to Embiid. That's good. And so Lowry with the assist. Lowry's got four assists in the game. But Kyle Lowry has spent his entire career finding open teammates. Bogdanovich, that's good. Three points. 1-11 left in the third quarter of the game. Lowry surveys the D. Pass to heel. Screen by Embiid. Heel drives in. And down it goes. Two points. Heald's got five points. Wow, Buddy Heald, usually the guy they're trying to create open shots for. This time he returns the favor. Here's McBride. He's covered by Oubre. Bogdanovich from long range. And again, New York with the triple. Wow, you don't see him left alone very often. And of course, he makes good use of it. It's Lowry with a drive. It's deflected. Here's McBride. He's covered by Oubre. McBride passes to Achua. Trains the triple. And now it's just a two-point Philadelphia lead. Here in the second half, they're really focused on stretching the floor. And guys, boy, when you're hit... Oh, indeed! The finish! Woo! That was big time. I mean, a dunk contest finish from Embiid. This guy can fly. Oubre with a steal. 
Here we go. The Sixers on the break. And now we've got an intentional foul. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Timeout called. The 76ers. And now that they have some time to get a little bit of rest, it's time for these players to regroup while hydrating themselves with some Gatorade, looking to gain a boost of energy as they continue to play in this game. And staying hydrated is the only surefire way to do it. An athlete's body doesn't have the same power and stamina without proper hydration. These guys will be sure to use this timeout wisely. And so here is Philadelphia. Melton finds Martin. And that's it for the third quarter. Both teams scoring well as we head to the fourth. The six. All right, let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by State Farm. You know, I'm kind of stoked this was a choice because I love this pass. A remarkable find. He put his court vision on full display. Well, making the game easy for your teammates. All about putting them in a position to score. That's pretty. We've reached the fourth quarter in what has been a very competitive game. Should be an exciting finish. And on the floor for New York here in the fourth. Dante DiVincenzo out there with Josh Hart. Then there's Boyan Bogdanovich. Then it's OG Ananobi, and it's Randall in at the center, filling out the middle. Lowry, good. Well, attacking off the bounce has been the consistent part of Kyle Lowry's game. He's always had tremendous body control. Bogdanovich with a screen on Lowry. The three, DiVincenzo, and Reed pulls it down. Ooh, that's a tough break. After poor communication defensively, it leaves him all by himself. Lowry, the pass to Reed, and he jams it after taking a nice feed on the run. Nice one-handed jam. Simple and effective, B.A. Hey, with the lead, I'm surprised he didn't come up with something a little more creative. Bogdanovich against Martin. A good look from Bogdanovich. Perfection. Beautiful stroke. Well, that's Bogdanovich making great use of the pick and roll. Fantastic at exploiting whatever the defense delivers to him. Lowry, the pass to Reed. Back to Lowry. Drives to the hoop. The Knicks with the rebound. And that closeout certainly made a difference. Well, no question. He altered that shot. And most of the time, that's just as good as blocking it. Bogdanovich against Martin. Just five on the clock. Hart finds Bogdanovich. Fast break, Philadelphia. And here's Lowry from the arc. He buries it from three. And the 76ers lead by six. All right, guys, what do you think about the hustle stats for the 76ers? Yeah, they've collected an impressive number of steals so far, using fast hands to force some turnovers and then scoring on the other end. And another theme in this game to me, guys, has been how lethal they've been in transition. Attack on the break and make sure you convert. Achua's checked in for New York. Brunson comes in for Hart. Healed up top. And an OB covering. To the inside. Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. At seven feet tall, Embiid looks to dunk often, especially when he's got good position. Ananobi, a screen on Covington. Here's Brunson outside. Oh, Brunson nails it from deep. Jalen Brunson wants the ball in these moments, and there he shows you why. Big time shot. Maxi passes to Heald. Screen by Embiid. Back to Maxi. To the middle. Embiid can't hit. Got to credit the defense. They found a way to stop him, and that's never an easy task. Achua with a screen. Pass to Brunson. Takes a three. And again, New York with the triple. A huge shot. His three-point shooting has been outstanding tonight. Yeah, he's done more work outside the arc than inside it, and that's not going to change now. They'll ride his long-range game all the way to the end of this one. Hey, they really needed that one. Big-time move inside. Has the ability to score against size, and those were crucial. 
kick out to Brunson. Outside, DiVincenzo. Covington grabs the board. Philadelphia's got four of seven threes to go so far in this game. Down low. Here's Embiid. Back to Maxi. Screen by Embiid. Maxi attacking. Blocked! And that's out of bounds. Philadelphia will retain possession. Here's Melton. Four on the clock to the paint. Here's Embiid. That shot missing. Achua with some nice D. Pass to Brunson. And here's Achua. DiVincenzo on the wing. Melton covers. And here's Brunson from the arc. And it's good! Oh, what a sensational bucket! That brings him within one! Crucial possession right here. The crowd is on edge. Eight second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Maxi attacking. It falls! It's been great to see guys who don't back down under pressure. To me, more often than not, when you attack, good things happen. Randall a screen on Maxi. DiVincenzo against Maxi. Randall with it. And so he draws the foul, headed to the line to shoot a pair. On Robert Covington. Now these are the moments of responsibility that Julius Randle relishes. Now you've got to make your foul shots. Second free throw, no good that time. He really wanted that one. And they commit an intentional foul. We'll see another one of those, so they get into the penalty. Yeah, just a must-foul situation to stop the clock. And so they foul intentionally. So the first one drops, and that makes it a three-point lead. So he gets them both, and it's a four-point ball game. Well, you love a guy who gets himself to the line, takes his time, and makes the free throws. Complete professional. And the Knicks with the possession here.
Teams that are among the most athletic in the NBA. And I don't know if it'll be a track meet, but it will be an up-tempo game. And that's the only way these teams know how to play. Now the starting group for Orlando. The guard pair for them, Anthony and Suggs. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Van Caro in at the five down low. Great to see a young guy play that kind of cerebral game. Wagner sees a shooter and gets him set up nicely. Now here's Brunson. Not a lot of room. And he drops in the way up off the glass. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. Whatever the defense gives, that's what he takes. A sign of a skilled offensive player. And here's Brunson. He'll bring it up for New York. And about a minute gone here in the first quarter. Drives to the hoop. From deep. The shot's good from Achua. You know, great beat there by Jalen. Brunson, a terrific facilitator. We know they like having Brunson out there, Greg, a player they can run the entire offense through. No doubt. And he can be trusted on to take the keys and just run things effectively. He keeps mistakes to a minimum, and he's a solid creator for his teammates. Yeah, he just flat out tricked that one, missed it, and has no one to blame but himself. Even Chenzo passes to Brunson. Into the lane, and he uses the glass on the way. There's the unselfishness you like to see in a guard. DiVincenzo keeping his eyes up and his options open. Here's Anthony. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. And you know what? They're going to keep using him. I mean, he'll be the centerpiece of their offense today. You can bank on that. No one near Suggs as he lets it go. Trains it from beyond the arc. Suggs has got five points so far. You know, it's not his greatest strength. He's got a lot of different things that he's good at, but Suggs will hit the three if you give it to him. The three for DiVincenzo. And Carroll grabs the board. And I thought that was going to drop. It looked good from here. Here's Anthony. Good. Nice job down low. He has six. The closer the better for Anthony, as is the case for most guys. He just wants to drop that one in. Brunson. And the layup falls. And a nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. Wagner is screen on DiVincenzo. Wagner against DiVincenzo. Isaac kicks to Anthony. Three-pointer. And again, it's Orlando with the three. You just know from a very young age, Cole Anthony's been perfecting that three-point shot. Maybe like his dad. His dad was kind of a pedestrian three-point shooter. Here's Orlando now. They've outscored him 10 points to two during this run. Mark, in recent years, Orlando's been one of the league's bigger teams. Well, you can see clearly, Kevin, that the front office prioritizes length. You don't ever have to really worry about them playing small ball. Now here's Randall. Paolo Bancaro unable to get his last shot to go in. There's your bully ball right there. I mean, a lot of folks think that's all Randall is, is a bully baller. With those big shoulders and that muscular body, he does a nice job putting them to use. Now here's Suck. He's got five and good that time. It all started with the pass. That's what coaches love to see, ball movement. Brunson goes in. Got a hand on it. Good closeout from Suggs right there. How about the young fella impacting the game at the defensive end? Ananobi with it. Picked up by Suggs. Brunson no good. Orlando leading by five. To the right side. Back to Anthony. Orlando moving the ball around. And they're on the break. Here's Achua. A dunk by Achua. Just great anticipation and awareness to come up with the steal and then trigger the fast break. Four seconds separating the shot and game blocks. And it's Van Caro missing. New York's gone. One of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. A 
Dumps in the pass to DiVincenzo. He kicks it to Randall. And foul on the shot. So, And here we go with the coach's challenge. A surprise in a competitive game like this. And he's disputing the personal foul call. And I think when it comes to some of the more... The previous play is under the The action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being... The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And so the word is in. They decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. And he can't hit the second. Anthony looking it over. Banked in off the glass. Oh, Anthony. Anthony's got 11. Putting his agility to work. Anthony beats the contact in. Suggs with the steal. Time, time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. And, and team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. Typically, there's some type of adjustment made out of a timeout. It might be major or it could be just a slight tweak. Cole Anthony has been on display for Orlando. And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. And when you consider how the Magic are doing, what do you think? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Yeah, you know, I agree. No warm-up needed. They came in on fire and have already built a nice lead. Achua is out there with Julius Randle. Then it's Jalen Brunson. Then there's Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Ananobi in at the three, the small forward. There the group New York will start the second. You know, sometimes making it difficult for him to finish at the rim is all you can ask for from the defense. I right now let's send it over to the sidelines and get a report from David Aldrin. Thank you, Kevin. New York City remains a basketball mecca. NYC legend and former Nick Mark Jackson always talks up the basketball environment. He says, coming up in New York is all about the grit, the grind, the edge, the competitiveness, the swag, the confidence, the struggle, and the embracing of the bright lights. Kevin? Well, it's all there, and it is the biggest stage for sure. David, thanks. And this is something Suggs does not shy away from. Wanting to get to the line in these clutch moments. And they've got to talk to you each other on D there. Miscommunication. And now he's able to make a pick. But you spent your first four seasons playing in New York. What's that like? When the Knicks are winning, Kevin, there is no place you'd rather be. The fans are incredibly smart, loyal, and they'll treat you like a king. But no doubt that media pressure is for real. Oh, what a throwdown by the well-built 6'9 Julius Randle with power. Anthony kicks to Wagner. Outside Anthony. To the inside. Wagner finds Isaac. Anthony, no one around. And again, it's the magic from deep. This has been Anthony's night for sure. Everything going exactly right for him at the offensive end. Here's Randall. Eight points for him. Out to Brunson. In the corner, it's DiVincenzo. Five to shoot. Second shot opportunity. Here's a chew up. He can't get it to go. Isaac with some nice D. Magic leading by four. Suggs passes to Wagner. Driving the lane. It's good. Wagner's got four this quarter. Wagner saw the opening and took off. Slashing with the best of them. Ananobi kicks to Brunson. And we're now a little over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Anthony with it. He's picked up by Ananobi. And not allowing the shooter even an inch of breathing room on that one. And, guys, that's exactly the kind of high-impact 
defense they want to see out of him. But how fast Brunson plays. This pull-up is really unguarded. Got that bucket in in no time at all. And the Magic lead by five. Yeah, he, he's shown terrific control of the pace and the rhythm of this offense. You know, numbers don't always tell the story, guys, but his assist totals do paint the picture here. I mean, he's got everybody involved. During last season, Clark, both Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell scored 71 points in a game, the most in Kobe's 81. Yeah, that's remarkable, Kevin. We also had a ton of 50-point games, too. I think it's kind of due to the heliocentric offenses we see now. Teams building those rosters around their one superstar. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, time out, time but out. not exactly <laughs> logical. How about Hard pointless to foul there? I mean, I don't know where his head is, but it's not in the game. And the Magic making a change here. Fultz has checked in. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. So for the Magic, Houston's checked in. And it's Gary Harris in for Isaac. There's 126 left in the first half. Ananobi kicks to Achua. Find to find Ananobi. Gets it to him. Just five to shoot. A three from Bogdanovich. Rebound by the Magic. Yeah, but the defenders draped all over him. He just could not shake loose. As far as first overall picks go, Paolo Bancaro definitely arrived with a bang in 2022. He sure did, Greg. I mean, he's the first rookie since LeBron James to record at least 25 points, five boards, and five assists in his debut game. And he continues to build on that in route to rookie of the year. That one falls. And, you know, even when you D him up, Fult still powers through that defense, especially when he's this close to the rim. DiVincenzo kicks to Achua. Ananobi passes to DiVincenzo. New York moving the ball around. New York needs to get off a shot. Here's Ananobi. There's three pointers off the mark. And it's Fultz with the ball for Orlando. Six point game. Two second difference between shot clock and game clock. Trains the three pointer. It is so good to see Markel Fultz shoot the ball with confidence, showing why he's the overall number one pick in the draft. Back to Achua. Outside Bogdanovich. And right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. Bogdanovich has got six points in the quarter. Magically, 41, 35. Here's Houston. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And so it's Orlando with a six-point lead at the end of the quarter. They're pop. All right, David, thank you. And stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter started. And we've got second half action for you. Thus far, a pretty evenly contested game. Cole Anthony having a dominant impact, guys, in this game. Man, he's been running wild on him through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. And you know what? I'll be interested to see just how much he's got left in the tank. That first half had to take a lot out of him. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Next trail by six. Some people see the Orlando Magic as a team part with a very high ceiling. How about you? Lots of potential there. No question about it, Kevin. And plenty of room for growth. The challenge is going to be corralling that and moving it in the right direction. You know, it could take longer than people expect or want it to, so you got to be patient in this situation. On the court for Orlando, the guard pair for them, Anthony and Sun. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Van Caro in its center. Putting the defender in the popcorn maker. I mean, Randall developing more tools every day. The Knicks making a switch here. Ananobi's checked in. Now a timeout called by Orlando. It's teacher time. We know you want one, so make some noise. 
Well, let's give it up for your next breaker dance crew. No good on that one. When you look at this Knicks roster, Greg, this is a team that feels it can make a deep playoff push. And they have their stars. They have tons of young talent. Developing that talent and adding a piece or two should get them where they want to go. Burks against Anthony. Here's Ben Kim. And finished off by Ben Carroll. Man, Carroll's got such a smooth game for a guy so big and powerful. Moves extremely well and has deceptive speed, too. Achua, the pass to Burks. Now here's Brunson. He's guarded close. Pass to Achua. Down to five on the shot clock. Ananobi has the open look. Drills it from outside. Ananobi's got himself going there. His first points of the game in the deep ball. And Wagner drives in. That one falls coming off Anthony's feet. And the Magic lead by six. Now here's Brunson. Tight defense on him. The pass to Achua. Brunson scanning the floor. And those plays can make a difference in a game like this. <laughs> well, you know it's going to fire up, Greg, everybody on that bench. Making a statement for sure. I mean, we'll see if they can maintain that aggressive approach, guys. And we always talk about making your teammate better. That assist was right on target. Brunson finds Achua. A dunk by Achua. And he shows us all what the breakaway rim was invented for. And you believe he almost brought the whole thing down by hanging on that long. Boy, that was a great dunk, and we've got a great game here. Here's Ben Carroll. You know, Ben Carroll's difficult to match up with because of his versatility, especially when he's aggressively looking to score. The Magic shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And at the line last season, about 78% as a team. Pretty solid numbers. Knicks trail by six. And here's Brunson. Ananobi kicks to Achua. Now Randall, he's got nine. Burks on the wing. They set the pick. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It's on Paolo Bancaro. For New York, they have gone two of four at the free throw line. Bogdanovich has checked in for a chew. And Burks hits two free throws. Free throw shooting is about mechanics, confidence, and your mental approach. He's locked in from there most every night. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. Pass to Brunson. Bogdanovich sets the pick for Brunson. Scores the bucket. He's 7 for 11 and continues to look good. And you can tell Brunson has been well coached. He knows just when to call for that pick and roll. And Isaac throws it down. That's a textbook example of how to move the ball. Boy, you got to love that action. Now here's Brunson. He's tightly guarded, and there it is for him. And I like seeing Brunson drive inside. Good at just keeping the pressure on the defense. And Ben Carroll, here we go. The finish was nice, but the setup was better. Yeah, G.A., the pick working to full effect before the stuff. And, you know, not enough help from the defense there to compensate. He gets a clean look, and that's exactly how you draw it up. Here's Anthony. Got it. Good job in the low post. And it's a six-point Orlando lead. And he can take over in a nanosecond. I mean, once he catches fire, it's difficult to squelch it. And Clark, much like his pop, Cole Anthony has proven to be a skilled ball handler. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Perhaps it runs in the DNA, huh? He definitely has some strong instincts out there, and I know he got a little bit of that from you, Greg. And he does his part to help others find shots when he's not scoring himself. Dante DiVincenzo, he's checked in for the Knicks. 
You know, once in a while, a guy will come into the league and just hit the ground running. Van Carroll was a star from the first week. Even Chenzo passes to Bogdanovich. Yep, it counts. Bogdanovich has got eight. Sensational ball movement there. When you pass the ball like that, good things happen. Shots good by Anthony. And the Magic lead by six. Not just the move from Anthony, but he also follows a good move up with a bucket. Picked by Randall on the wing. Ananobi really left alone that time. He has five. It works well there. Not much resistance from the deep. Yeah, that's not the defense you need. You've got to be tougher defensively. Now a timeout called by Orlando. For the match, Houston's checked in, and Harris subbed in for Jonathan Isaac. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Bancaro kicks to Harris. Outside Anthony. Passes it to Houston. Out to Anthony. In, and his hot hand continues. 10 of 11 from the floor, and looking for more. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Here's McBride, and the layup's good off the glass. This team really feeds off of one another in terms of their energy. Perhaps the case simply that some kind of motivational speech is at halftime. Got both of these teams fired up. As we end the third quarter, a great game. Both teams playing well. Magic out. Now let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by State Farm. Uh, just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball. And how about the perfect delivery? And they'd love to see every possession in this way. True team basketball. And with three quarters behind us, we start the fourth quarter in what is still anybody's ballgame. We've got Alec Burks. Hart is out there with Bogdanovich. And then there's Precious Achua. And it's McBride in at the point guard position. That's the five for New York right now. They set the pick. Brunson, that's a two-pointer. Here's Achua. Carter pulls it in. Magic leading by four. Harris passes to Houston. Back to Harris. Takes the three. Hits the three-point bomb. Harris has got his first three points of the game. He's really a dangerous perimeter shooter. Harris is great at cashing in from this spot on the floor. Here's Brunson. And he banks in the lane. And hey guys, all about hard work from this point on. And they've worked hard to create that high-quality shot and then able to knock it down. Black dishes to Anthony. Here's Houston. He's defended by Randall. The three from Anthony. Just four to shoot. Houston. That one falls coming off Anthony's feet. Houston's got his first points in this one. On the wing, DiVincenzo. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. Uh, a scene of confusion right uh -huh. there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. Brunson goes in. That one goes. Count it. Brunson's got four points in the quarter. This is the player that Brunson has become. He's capable of carrying the load offensively on any given night. And that one's good, Anthony. Well, he's been doing it all night. Why not go back to it? And no let up in him either, guys. I mean, he wants to continue to expand that lead. And as long as he's the one taking the shot, that lead's going to expand. Deflects the pass. And it's out of bounds to New York. They'll retain possession. Great instincts from him to get a hand on that pass and tip it out. And, you know, even though they didn't come up with the steal, that's still a nice defensive play. So a new group on the floor for Orlando. And so they foul intentionally. Jonathan Isaac. First personal foul. Third team foul. DiVincenzo passes to Randall. And Randall throws it down. 
It's been like this all night for both teams. The offenses having their way. Any lull in the action so far has been short-lived because there have been nothing but buckets in this one. Van Caro kicks to Fultz. Here he goes. Takes it off the glass. And that's now nine points for Markel Fultz. Look at Van Caro finding his teammate out there, getting the ball into the hands of the open man. Man, that's impressive. And here's DiVincenzo from the arc. Drills the three-pointer. Look at DiVincenzo going on the attack. He knows they need some points on this possession, and he delivers. Ogner passes to Fultz. Ogner against Randall. Ogner kicks to Isaac. Magic moving the ball around. Suggs dishes to Fultz. Just five on the clock. And stolen by DiVincenzo. Pass to Achua. Isaac against Brunson. DiVincenzo with the screen on Isaac. Brunson, good. Nerves never show through. Brunson is calm and cool as they come down the stretch. Wagner wide open. A three-pointer off the mark. And Randall has got the ball here for New York. Trailing by two. Randall with a screen for DiVincenzo. It's Randall with the drive. Calm when it counts. Randall has that flex DNA. Magic have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. And pretty much nice efficiency there. And finished off by Fultz. Raise the roof for Fultz. Get those hands up for him now. Excels at taking over during key possession. Takes it inside. And he gets the bucket. 28 points here for Jalen Brunson. Showing time and time again, he is comfortable being that first option. Brunson delivering in the clutch. Got it! Oh, you just love seeing a player with absolutely no fear. Cool, calm, collected, and confident in the biggest moment of the game? Yes. And here's Brunson outside. Nails the triple. And Brunson more than comfortable shooting the three. And boy, is he efficient when he lets it fall. Falls to the pass to Van Carroll. Count the basket and the foul. It's going to be on Precious Achua. No shame or fear in this young fella. Van Carroll going to take on any big shot. Love seeing that from him. Anthony's checked in for the match. A terrific end one on that. Those are the kind of plays, guys, that win basketball games. Here's Brunson. Off the inbound pass. And again, New York with the triple. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Well, it's been a three-point barrage. They came out gunning and have not stopped. Suggs adding another big play to his resume. Incredible. Three-second difference between shot clock and game. Even Genzo against Wagner. Randall with a screen for Brunson. Well, he's gifted with incredible length. Isaac is almost a footer. Seven feet, that is. So he should pile up the block shots. Anthony with it. Here's Wagner, and he hits the shot. Oh, but hang on, guys. Hold everything. The officials may review it here. And don't start the celebrations. Replay monitor and see if it got in. This one's over if the original ruling of a basket stands. But uh, we'll see. And, and to me, guys, it, it looks pretty clear-cut on the instant replay. I mean, the ball was out. to any other conclusion. I mean, we have a good look at it on the replay. The clock's still ticking when it left it.
athleticism that's on display is tremendous. Oh, yeah, these young boys got some bounce, but what I like is the skill and the basketball IQ combined with the athleticism. That's why you're seeing so many beautiful plays out here. And checking out the opening lineup for Memphis. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Jackson out there with Jaron Jackson. And it's smart in at the small forward position. Yeah, good to see Suggs bury the triple. This will only help with his confidence. Here's Moran. And then Moran with the jam. He'll put you on your heels in a hurry. Moran slicing through the D. Orlando with the ball. Wagner outside. Count it. One for one to start the game. Just taking it right to the rim. And no one was there to greet him. Easy possessions like that literally are just a gift. You just dream of them. He will gladly take those. <laughs> and they're not happy with the call here. Coach has given the signal. He's going to use his challenge. Probably a good idea in such a close contest. People were worried that this was... Game. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back them up. And the ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peed. And he makes a first. In an era where so many point guards are three-point shooters, John ja Morant, you know what? This man is built different. He's more of a throwback. Ja wants to apply pressure by driving, not shooting threes. And we talk about the importance of versatility. He's really got it all on the offensive end. For Richard, since 2011, the Grizzlies have been very competitive, only missing the playoffs three times. Yeah, in three quick years, they were able to do a rebuild by creating a strong culture, drafting some incredible young talent, and allowing them to develop. And here are the Magic now, following the bucket by the Grizzlies. Anthony finds Van Carroll. And he parries his first look. A combination of brute force and skill on the interior. Paolo Van Carroll. Moran against Isaac. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. Pass to Jackson. Three-pointer. It's hauled in by Isaac. The Magic have gone 4-4 four four from the floor. Perfect start. Oh, Van Carroll throws it down. Wow, Van Carroll using his size to find a path to the rim. Moran looking for an opening. Moran with the slam! And man, does Morant put on a show. He's got such insane athleticism. Here's Ben Carroll. There's the drive. Ooh, he's looking comfortable now. Three for three. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, when he gets engaged this early in the game, it's bad news for the defense. He can roll this start throughout the rest of the game. And then Morant with the jam! He gets a lot of defensive attention, but Morant... He can expect this type of rough scene anytime he takes it inside. And for the Berlin native, Franz Wagner. His NBA career is off to a terrific start. Yeah, at 6'10", he's extremely versatile. He's already a talented scorer at all three levels. Plus, he's able to put the ball on the floor and create for his teammates. And both free throws good for Wagner. For a star like him, you get lots of opportunities at the line, and he's great at cashing them in. He shoots. Jackson finds Morant. And the Grizzlies get another bucket right there. Just taking what the defense gives him. Morant keeping it simple on offense. I love it. And subs the bucket on the assist by Anthony. Anthony's got four assists in the game. And so it's Moran who brings up the ball for the Memphis Grizzlies. Six-point game. 136 left in the first quarter. 
Rebound by the Magic. Outstanding work to send him away. They sniffed that one out. Anthony with a bucket. And a quality find there by Isaac. It's really nice to see a big guy watching the floor for opportunities like that. Bain into the lane. Soft touch off the glass. Making a statement here early. Going right to the rack. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's nice to see him be assertive instead of settling for a jump shot, especially in the first quarter. Here's Suggs. Five points in the game. And Carroll passes to Wagner. Six to shoot. Up top, and Carroll defended by Jackson from 12 feet. And they'll turn it over. Couldn't get the shot off. A shot clock violation. For Memphis, they've got six of eight shots to go. And here's Morant outside. Smart finds Morant. Forget the long-range shots. Ja wants to challenge you down low. Yeah, a strong move to the rack draws that foul. First one falls for him. And Morant drops them both. The Magic have gotten all eight shots to go. They are red hot. Here's Suggs. Pass to Ben Carroll. Here's Wagner. Picked by Isaac. There's the triple. And again, it's Orlando with a three. Good heads up basketball. Season opening and capitalizes. Here's Morant. And then Morant with the dunk. And this is what John Morant does best. When he finds his rhythm on offense, he is almost impossible to guard. Anthony, right side. Just three on the clock. The putback. Well, offense is the order of the day as the first quarter comes to a close. It's the Magic, up five. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Halfway through the first half in this one. And a look now at how the offensive approach has been going here so far for Orlando. So far, they haven't had to force anything. They're swinging the ball around and turning good passing into points. And another thing they've done is look to shoot from the mid-range often. So far, it's really paying off for them. So on the floor for Memphis to kick off the second quarter. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Jackson out there with Jackson. And it's smart in its small forward. Don't sleep on Van Carroll's ability as a creator. He wants the best shot possible, even if it's not his own. Memphis trailing here. From deep, Morant. Oh, Morant sinks the triple. And Grant, these days, more and more teams emphasize the importance of switch defense. It's so true in the modern NBA, B.A. Every team has to be able to switch to take away a lot of the action of the offensive team. So having defenders who can guard multiple players on the court is a must. Boy, that foul looked intentional. Not exactly what you'd expect here. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't make sense, given the situation. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Here's Moran. Isaac gets a hand on it. Yeah, great link from Isaac. He gets the hand up, gets a piece, using that big wingspan. And again, it's Memphis with a three. He's been shooting with great consistency tonight. Love to see that confident play on offense. Suggs, the pass to Wagner. Using his post moves to get the two points. Wagner's got 11 points. Great recognition of the mismatch, abusing the smaller defender. Poor guy. Moran against Wagner. Jackson outside. Here's Smart. Oh, my goodness. Smart with a tough finish. Certain players search out contact. It's a skill. Marcus Smart is one of them. He is normally the person initiating the contact. Nice dribble move to get to the hoop for an easy two. And it's Moran with the ball for the Memphis Grizzlies. They trail by three. 
And the basket by Bain. And you see the unselfishness from Morant wanting to share that ball with any open teammate. Isaac with a screen on Jackson. Wagner, the pass to Suggs. And there's the drive. Oh, oh my hey, goodness! How wow. about that? Oh man, he got fancy with that finish. <laughs> he may be trying to provide the spark they need to break this one open. Pass to Jackson. Outside Morant. And again, it's the Grizzlies from deep. When Ja is knocking down that three consistently, it takes his game to a different level. Ben Carroll with a screen on Bain. Inside. Hello, Ben Carroll flushing it home. Nice ball movement there. That's how you break down the defense. Jackson outside. Back to Morant. Wagner with a steal. Pass to Suggs. And in the second quarter, a little under three and a half minutes played already. Wagner, the pass to Ben Carroll. Hello with the attack. And this team relies on Ben Carroll scoring. But tonight, he's carried them. For Memphis, they've gotten six of their seven shots to go in the second quarter. Back to Moran. Up top, Jackson. Pass to Moran. Takes the three. And again, it's Memphis with a three. This first half has been all him. He's getting to his spots and going to work. Three-pointer, Anthony. And again, it's the magic from deep. And this is just fun. These teams are trading threes back and forth. This is today's NBA. Hey, we see this kind of exchange more often than not. Job ja steps on the gas. Jackson on the wing. Timeout, timeout, timeout. called. Memphis. Yeah, Coach no doubt wants to use this timeout to review the matchups and maybe make some adjustments as well. I'm sure all of the above is in order, and you can never be too content. Here's Moran. 27 points for him. Sends it home from three-point land. In motion, Moran's shooting ability is solid, but when he's this set up, it's outstanding. Van Carroll finds Wagner. And he throws it down with one hand. Impressive one-hand slam right there, B.A. Man, as long as he's confident about it, I'm good with it. Maybe use two hands next time. He knows where he is. Here's Moran. Moran elevates at the rim. Oh, he's got some hops. Morant, this man loves to attack the rim whenever he gets the chance. And when I mean any chance, I mean any chance. That's been the story of their offense so far. Getting a number of looks from point-blank range. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. With four on the clock. Oh, there's Morant with the slam. Now that's how you use the screen right there. And it leads to a thunderous finish. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, you like the pick to set up the open shot. But when it leads to a dunk, okay, even better. You'll take it. Timeout, and timeout. stolen by... Oh, and Carroll. Oh, Orlando calls timeout. Three-pointer, Anthony. Oh, and the release was before the buzzer, but it's off target. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that's been very close so far. Magic out in front. They're up by three. And we'll see you back here after the break. Third quarter action in just a bit. We've got second half action for you. Thus far, a pretty evenly contested game. 
Oh, a fantastic game from John ja Moran in this one. Yeah, they've done an amazing job of creating room to operate for them. And then, of course, executing. I like how they came into this one with the game plan, and they're just going out and executing it. Terrific job. They've got Anthony. Gary Harris out there with that Carroll. And it's Houston in at the power forward position. That's who's out there for Orlando. Back to Bain. Down low. And Rose, the bucket on the assist by Bain. Rose has got his first bucket in this one. Smart play from Rose. Getting up close to the basket for a high percentage look. Pass to Harris. And the shot goes. And the Magic lead by three. The defense couldn't collapse quickly enough. And what you like about Gary Harris, you can depend on him to make good decisions and always bring that energy. Yeah, no doubt, B.A. I mean, he's all about the team. Willing to do whatever they ask of him. You can't have enough guys like that on your roster. First team call. Anthony against Smart. Pulls up on the wing. No good off the back of the rim. I don't know if he got in his own head there or what, because the defense can't really take credit for that miss. Now here's Rose. The D's right on him. Count it. Rose has gotten his second bucket of the game. So gifted close to the rim. Rose also possesses a tremendous understanding of when to go with the float. As to Anthony, from deep three-point range, the rebound by Jackson. The Grizzlies have got two of three from the floor in this third quarter. Smart outside. Jackson with a screen on Harris. And he commits the intentional foul. Anthony, second personal foul. First team foul. Here's Bain. Jackson for three. Sinks it from distance. Jackson's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. That's just unfair. 6'11", Jackson just sinking threes. I guess this is the new NBA. That one falls. Nice offense here. Close in. Great bet to go. Payne with a screen on Harris. Here's Rose. And stolen by Anthony. And the Magic pushing it up now. And they pick up two. Anthony's got 11. Strong defense followed by some smart offense. That's just good fundamentals. Rose, the pass to Williams. That one falls. Nice feed that time from Rose. Another assist in the career of D. Rose. Here's Black, guarded by Baines. And that one's good. And the Magic lead by two. Memphis has gone one of two shooting from the perimeter since halftime. Three minutes gone now in the third quarter. It's Jackson, high post. And that's an intentional foul. Magic foul. Gary Harris. First personal foul. Second team foul. Now here's Bain. Not a lot of room. 4-3. It's rebounded by Bancaro. Bancaro's got four rebounds now. Anthony with a bucket. Anthony's got four points now in the quarter. And you look at how they've come out in the second half. It's almost like night and day. And they look like a completely different team. I wonder what Coach said to them at halftime to help spark this momentum chain. With that much room around him, it's hard to imagine he could have gotten a better shot. The kick out to Ben Carroll. From distance, Paolo. He felt the defender closing out to him, and Ben Carroll let it fly. That catch and shoot ability is a weapon. Timeout called, the Grizzlies. Some changes. Jackson comes in for Jackson, and it's Ja Morant in for Bain. 
And it's Morant with the ball for the Grizzlies. Seven point differential. To stop the run. Anthony grabs the board. Orlando calls timeout. Checked in for Anthony. Clark is checked in for Memphis. The Magic have gotten six of eight shots to go and looking good since the break. Van Caro in the post. Working on Clark. And Van Caro with the bucket. And the assist by Fultz. Memphis has gotten six of ten three pointers to drop. Clark with a screen on Isaac. Clark up top, launches it. He drops it from range. That right there, that's the kind of look this system is designed to create. Here's Suggs, guarded by Rhodes. Fultz against Moran. Fultz is good. And the Magic lead by eight. Credit them for making the right halftime adjustments. Oh, yeah, I can't agree more. They haven't missed. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Moran finds Clark. Back to Moran. This one for three. And Fultz pulls it down. Here's Suggs. Nine points in the game. And there's the foul. It'll go on Derek Rose. That's his first foul. Now Fultz. Two on the clock. And Fogner gets it to go. And it's a 10-point Orlando lead. Their offense has been unstoppable. Just firing on all time cylinders. Out, time out. They've had great execution. And what stands Mark. out is that they're just taking what the defense gives them. Not forcing anything. Timeout call. Memphis. From deep, Moran. Oh, no good on the last second attempt there. And so it's Orlando ending the quarter up 10. Their key to consistency has been their dominance in the paint. They've been the more physical team. More 2K action in just a moment. With three quarters behind us, let's see what this fourth period holds in store. Orlando has gone four of six from three-point range thus far. On the court for Memphis. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Marcus Smart out there with Jackson. And it's Jackson in at the five, down low. Moran, the pass to Jackson. Back to Moran. And then Moran with the dunk! The team first mindset of Jackson, willing to get the ball to his open guys. Here's Orlando. Isaac outside. Out of bounds. It'll be Memphis' ball. Bounds. And the Magic making a switch here. Anthony's checked in. Here's Morant. Trying to make up ground here. And with plenty of time left, you want to play with urgency, but not desperation. On the wing, Bane. Jackson on the wing. And perfection right through the net. The potential of Jaron Jackson is endless. A center who has a tremendous J. Fourth quarter of basketball. We're about a minute into it. To the inside. Isaac. And the dunk by Isaac. And just shredding apart the defense with his pass. He's helping to pace this offense so well. He's locked in with his teammates right now, setting guys up in perfect position. Here's Moran. And another basket for Memphis. This is the productive play Moran delivers, and the team works hard to facilitate them for him. And Marcus Smart picks up the foul. Oh. 
That's his first foul. First game foul. Final quarter of play, about a minute and a half off the clock. It's Suggs with a drive. And that one is hammered home! Man, Suggs can really move. And once he sees he has a clear path, he launches up for the dunk. Jackson can't get it to go. For Orlando, they've gone a perfect three for three here in the fourth. And Suggs the bucket on the assist by Anthony. Anthony's got six assists now in the game. Isaac against Moran. Rebounded by Suggs. See, that miss, that miss right there. It's why teams try to avoid the mid-range jumper these days. Anthony misses. Normally, he drains that. And let's quickly check out the scoring breakdown here for the Magic. Look, they're getting good looks inside. It's been a point of emphasis all night long, but I love this hard-nosed attitude of this team. Yeah, and their team-first approach is another thing you have to like. And they've had great ball movement and are getting a lot of points off assists. From outside the arc. And Marcus Smart picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. For Orlando, they've gotten four or five attempts to fall so far in the fourth. Here's Suggs. And he sinks it again. Seven of seven from the field now. You have fantastic focus from Suggs. Showing toughness fighting through the contact. And here's Moran outside. It's rebounded by Bancaro. Bancaro's got five rebounds in the game. Isaac outside. Out to Anthony. On the wing, Suggs. Five to shoot. To the middle. And he dunks it. What a pass to set him up. Yeah, once Suggs gets hot, he's not easy to stop. Especially when he's getting whatever shot he wants. Now here's Moran. Fires from deep. It's rebounded by Wagner. Nothing is going his way in this half offensively. Really having a hard time finding his shot. Here's Suggs. Wagner against Jackson. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Second personal foul. Second. Free throw good. Wagner. At the line for Orlando. Good on both. Memphis has got nothing to fall from outside the arc here in the fourth. 0 for 4. They came out and had a statement win with their performance tonight. A fantastic effort to get it done here for the Magic. Check out their assist numbers. They didn't get stuck in isolation. They got the ball to the guys who had the best matchups. And of all the highlights and performances we've seen here tonight, the one thing that stands out is what an unbelievable night it's been for Paolo Bancaro. Oh, he was at the center of everything that happened in this game. His energy was felt throughout the building, and his impact, well, it was incredible. Bain with it, now guarded by Isaac. Smart, looking around. Outside Moran. Here's the teardrop, and the layup is up and in. Morant's got 42 in the game. Ooh, little sweet touch on the floater. Morant has so many shots to choose from in his bag. Suggs with the bucket, and the Magic lead by 15. Their home crowd has energized them all game. Now they're closing it out. It's always nice to perform like this, especially in front of the faithful home crowd. Outside for Moran. Payne with a screen on Wagner. Back to Jackson. Fires for three. Connects from downtown. Three. And the Magic with possession. 17 points was their biggest margin. Anthony, the pass to Isaac.
Between two conference rivals. Cannot wait. Nothing, Kevin. These players and fans are very familiar with each other and desperately want bragging rights. And the Clippers starting five. Filling the two and three, the core of George and Leonard. E.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice. And it's Harden in the point guard. Here's the Clippers. He feeds it to George. Lock at six, takes a three. It's rebounded by Memphis. Smart on the wing. Good, and a nice assist from Morant. Smart's got the first points up on the board for the Grizzlies. And George kicks to Harden. And just about a minute into the first quarter, dishes it to Lennon. by Leonard. And if Kawhi is going to do this, add the sizzle to the steak, he is going to be unstoppable. Steve, this current Clipper. Oh, yes. Good. Stop it, John. He's putting on a show. Morant against Harden. Leonard with a screen on Morant. Kicks it out to Harden. Back to Leonard. There's the pass to Harden. Leonard with a screen on Morant. The three from Harden doesn't go for him. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Desmond Bain using that power to throw it down. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. The first quarter of action, two minutes in. I love how aggressive Bain is on defense. He doesn't give his man much room to work with. And man, is this team on a roll right now offensively, Greg. So fun to watch. They're playing with so much confidence, which is why they're tearing it up on this end. Los Angeles on D. It's a five-point game. Quick trigger on display there from Ja. George against Smart. Leonard sets a screen for George to end the run. And then Leonard with the top. Oh, that's a major oh. league throwdown. Keeps a tight grip on that rim, too, after the finish. Williams for three. That shot is off. Clippers trail by six. Harden surveying the D, launches a three. It's rebounded by Memphis. And Jared Jackson Jr. is so impressive, especially on the defensive end. A dynamic shot blocker, Greg. Jared Jackson is someone that loves setting the tone on the defensive end. Not to mention, he's a very skilled offensive threat. So timeout called here, the first for Los Angeles. Hands checked in. And in this first quarter, about three minutes played. And that one's good. Morant. Starting himself at the arc. John Morant putting his range to good use. George dishes to Leonard. Offline with his three. Now the Grizzlies with it. 
They're on a 13-4 run right now. And the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. Right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. And what a way to start this game, dominating at both ends of the floor. They came in prepared, focused, and really jumped on the other team early. And Harden proving why he's an elite ball handler, absolutely cutting the D to pieces with his move. Morant outside. And he drives in. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Morant's got 12. Yeah, they, they have gone full throttle from the opening tip, showing no signs of letting up. Already ahead by double digits, trying to run away and not look back. Harden with it. Williams picks him up. And James Harden with the three. Harden's got his second basket. And Harden is a nightmare in the pick and roll. Just a clever combo guard who is completely unpredictable. And it's good for two. And they have owned the paint so far. And the score reflects it. I'll tell you, this was their strategy coming in. They obviously identified a weakness there inside. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Oh, nice work finding the open man by George. Plays like this prove he's a team player. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. Smart, wide open, he fired. Good, and the nice assist from Morant. Morant's got three assists now in this one. Leonard sets a screen for Harden. The dish to Leonard. Morant against Harden. Can't cash in from close range. Shut down. This is the way you play defense. This is how you protect the rim. And as the first quarter wraps up, already a double-digit lead. Grizzlies lead by 10. Live from the FedEx Forum, you're watching 2K Sports. And welcome back to the second quarter of action. Plenty of basketball left to play, but this one has been one-sided so far. All right, well, look at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for the Grizzlies. Well, in my opinion, the way the three has been falling for them here early on, you have to think they'll keep firing away. And also, guys, they're playing for one another right now. All those extra passes are leading to easy buckets. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Jackson is out there with Williams, and it's smart, and it's small forward. That's the group for Memphis to kick off the second quarter. And with an update from the sidelines, let's check in with David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Now, the Grizzlies' backcourt is in the conversation for the best starting backcourt in the league. Desmond Bain says Ja is obviously the focus, and that's why I feel like we're a good combo. If they want to sell out on him and pack in the paint, then that leaves me open on the perimeter to do my damage. Kevin, back to you. And he does a lot of damage. David Banks, a great tandem indeed. Great. You look at the size of some of these point guards now. Magic Johnson would feel right at home. <laughs> yeah, it's a part of a larger trend with all the switching defensively. If you have just one smaller guy on the floor, he is going to get targeted. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Grizzlies will take it. And the Grizzlies leading by eight. It falls for his seventh bucket of the contest. He's seven for nine. It's been the John Morant show all night. What a competitor. Here's George. Kicks it out to Harden. George with a screen on Morant. Harden the pass to George. Back to Harden. Shot clock at six. Leonard with a screen on Morant. Harden's shot is off. Can't fault the play call. Even though he could convert, 
That's a good shot. Time no out, question out. the Grizzlies have put together Smitty a team Party. that can potentially go deep. Kevin, a serious postseason run is what this team was built for. They let their young talents develop, and they did a good job of putting strong pieces around them. Russell Westbrook's checked in for Los Angeles. Quarter number two, we're about two minutes in. Jackson kicks to Morant. Driving in and finished up by Morant. Such a nimble player, John ja Morant. Has so many tricks in his bag. Westbrook feeling it out a bit. Left side, Leonard. From past the arc, gets the three-pointer to fall. Leonard's got seven. Guys, that's just really unstoppable. He poses a ton of matchup problems for whomever he's facing. Bain sets the screen for Morant. Clippers trail by nine. From downtown, and there's Paul George on the assist from Westbrook. When Paul George is on the court, the defense has to be aware of him on the perimeter. Morant, the bounce pass. Morant sets a screen for Smart. And slam dunk by Smart. And once he gets clear off the screen, there is no stopping him. <laughs> no, not when there's a flush waiting to happen. That's a big-time move and a big-time finish. And George with the stuff. The trust George has built with his team, they know he'll finish strong if they feed him. Morant outside. Field goal number nine. He's nine of 12 with that basket. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Westbrook passes to Leonard. And here in the second quarter of action as we approach four minutes played. Shot clock at five. Back to Tucker. And the rejection by Morant. Great read defensively from Ja. I love seeing him use his athleticism to block shots. Williams with a clean look. Good and Smart gets the assist. Smart's got his fifth assist in this one. And the Clippers call time here. This is checked in for the Clippers. James Harden comes in for Russell Westbrook. And so it's Harden bringing it up for Los Angeles. Trailing by 10. Pass to man. He dishes it to George. Tice with a screen on Smart. From deep, George hits it from three-point range. George has got a couple of three-pointers in the second for the Clippers. They time it right, they can end this quarter with a two for one. And that's how you want to end the quarter. Jackson setting the pick here for Morant. That one's not going to go. Excellent D there from George. We've got a nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Up and in for the basket, number four. That makes him four for five now. If he's that close, it's tough to compete with Paul George. Morant standing the floor. Latrey. They get it back, and it's Smart with the extra effort. And the Grizzlies lead by seven. Oh, big time put back there. What a great motor on this guy. There is no timeout, one timeout. who goes after those rebounds harder. Los Angeles calls timeout. <laughs> Grizzlies making a change here. Now, here's George. And there's the drive. I mean, as a defender, Jaron Jackson, he has it all. Quick to the ball, provides great rim protection, and he never gives up on plays. And so we conclude the first half. It's the Grizzlies. They're up by seven. Time now for the halftime break. 
with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2K Sports. And if you're just joining us in this one, first half is in the books, one half to go. Guys, John Morant has been sensational. Yeah, it's been a great performance from him, really staying focused on quality shots. And many of those quality shots have been jumpers, a very high percentage of those in the first half. So with Leonard on the bench, here's who Teron Lewis going with. We've got George. E.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice. Then it's Harden, and it's Mann in at the three slot. So comfortable in pick and roll. Paul George is a top-level ball handler who consistently makes the right play. Here's Bain. Yep, that one goes. And the Grizzlies lead by seven. Terrific play call to give him a clean look at the rim. That's how you want to start the second half. Listen, put the ball in the hands of your best scorers and let them go to work. Keep it simple. And now we've got some time to check in from the sidelines. You got for us, D.A.? Thanks very much. Well, John Morant might be right-handed, but he looks to drive left. When he was a kid, he broke his right arm flying off a trampoline. Now that arm is shorter, and actually that right hand is smaller too. He says, that's why I dribble with my left hand. I'm able to control the ball better. In my head, I think I'm left-handed. Back to you. <laughs> Trade secrets, right, David? Hey, thanks for the report. Always nice to see PG dropping a dime, putting this excellent vision on the floor to good use. Rose, that's good. I love it. Beautiful job getting to the rim, making a play. On the wing, George, guarded by Smart. And Tucker kicks to Tice. Green by Tice. It's Harden with the drive. Unable to get that one. Nice D from Rhodes. And Memphis, Smitty, one of the flashiest teams in the league. Lots of highlight real material there for sure. Kevin, you need the sizzle and the state. This is a young team with a lot of great talent that's still learning how to be consistent. It's part of the process. Tipped away. Harden against Rose. Fires from deep. Not as good in the Memphis leads. Cut down to just six points with the basket from Harden. And no one hits a pull up like the beer. I mean, he's perfected the quick stop and pop. And that thing is a deadly shot. Rose gets a wide open look. And they come right back with their own three point. Rose has got five points in the quarter. And the Clippers call time here. And Memphis making a change here. Williams is checked in. Kawhi Leonard's checked in for the Clippers. Westbrook comes in for George. Harden with it. Williams picks him up. Leonard the pass to Harden. Leonard with a screen on Williams. Back to Leonard. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. Good timing rolling off the screen. Leonard can make this play in his sleep. Westbrook against Rose. Right side smart. Good for the fifth time in five shots. He remains perfect. That's a well-timed, well-coordinated play. Comes right off the pick for the lay-in. It's Harden with the drive. And blocked by Bain. When Desmond is on you, be careful because he's capable of blocking your shot. Wasted no time on that one. And it's a 12-point Grizzly lead. Another good play. This is how they built the lead. Calling on the right guys 
at the right time. The reason why they stayed aggressive and they have not let up this entire night. And at this point, I wouldn't expect them to. Westbrook kicks to Harden. Six to shoot. Up and in on the layups. Harden's got 12 points in the game. And when Harden's this close, he looks to score. Love his mentality. Bain finds Williams. Bain sets the screen for Williams. Now Bain. He's got nine. And the Grizzlies call their first time out of the game. Checked in for Bain. Forty-one seconds left to play in the third. Just three to shoot. Jackson from long range. Rebound by the Clippers. Westbrook with it. He's picked up by Morant. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Morant. That's his first foul. George has checked in for James Harden. Number 13. Paul George against Smart. Leonard dishes to George. Leonard with a screen on Smart. Six on the shot clock. George against Smart. Leonard, that's for two. A shot's good on the assist by George. Leonard's got it back down to single digits for Los Angeles. I'm out called the Grizzlies. Number one, James Five seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Morant with a wide open look. And so it's Memphis in the driver's seat. Up eight points at the end of the quarter. Their shooting has been the big key. Their percentage from the field so far has been terrific. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And now let's go back to a play from earlier as we show you our State Farm assist of the game. And, and I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. Yeah, you also have the location of the pass. Puts it right where it needs to be, where his man can do something with it. And with three quarters behind us, let's see what this fourth period holds in store for us. And let's head over to the sideline and catch up with David Alder. Thanks, Kevin. Well, Coach Taylor Jenkins talked to his team during the break. Now, Coach told his team we're up. Take care of the ball. Don't give them the game. Playing smart basketball will clinch a victory for us. Guys? Thank you, David. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Marcus Smart is out there with Williams. And it's Jackson in its center. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. Morant against George. And it's sent back by George. This is what you love about PG at the defensive end. The link instincts. What a block. Smart on the wing. Here's Morant. It's hauled in by George. Clippers trail by eight. Pass to Tucker. Down low. And it's Leonard with the jam. Wow, the vision of P.J. Tucker made that play possible. George against Morant. Williams has a screen for Morant. And the three ball is good. Morant's got 23 points. And that kick takes the D totally out of the equation. Hey, if you're not going to fight over, you're essentially giving the shooter the look he wants. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. The claw making it look so easy right now. He's demanding the ball, and you see why. Williams, a screen on George, and finished off by Morant. 
just rubbing it in their faces with that. <laughs> he is never going to take his foot off the pedal. And the defense knows he's relentless. You have to try and match that intensity. And the Grizzlies leading by nine. On the wing, Bain, guarded by Hart. Here's Moran. Oh! What body control from Moran. Able to take the hit and power through it all. George looking over the floor. Past a man. This is to Hart. Shot clock at six. Leonard with a screen on Morant. It's Harden with the drive. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. And the passing ability of James Harden, elite. And so Morant will bring it up for Memphis. Just over two and a half minutes played now here in the final quarter of regulation. Shot, high post. Rebounded by Tucker. It could be a little disheartening when you do everything right and come away with nothing. And he commits the intentional foul. Desmond Banks. Second personal foul. First team foul. George against Smart. Two minutes remaining at the game. George passes to Mann. Six to shoot. Harden against Morant. Here's Leonard. It's good. The assist that time from Harden. Harden's got three assists now in this one. Kawhi Leonard is one of those guys who is elite at the mid-range jumper. And then Morant sends it in. My goodness, that was absolutely filthy. Oh, yes. This building is stunned. He dug deep, Greg, into his bag of tricks there. Leonard sets a screen for George. Back to Leonard, and Kawhi Leonard with the slam. Playing selfless basketball, Paul George gives it up when the pick and roll doesn't get him a shot. Here's Morant, and then Morant wins it in. A little artistry in the painted area, converting against the side. Proving once again that when you attack with confidence, good things tend to happen. And if they know what's good for them, that's the way they'll defend against him every time he takes the ball on the three-point lane. Bain with the screen on Hart. Morant passes to Bain. And the dunk to finish it off. A ah, beauty. And now as the clock ticks down, this is going to end up as a solid victory here for Memphis. They never settled for mediocre shots. And Kevin, they had great penetration this time around. The one player that really stands out, of course, in this one, it was a dazzling game for John Morant. Hard not to be impressed by what he did tonight. He was aggressive, he was efficient, and the defense had no answer. And Morant throws it down. Taking no chances. They go on one last run to seal the deal. Not messing around at all. They were focused, relentless, and they got the job done. Harden finds Leonard. Morange against Harden. Here's the drive. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Crafting off the dribble. And the moment Harden gets an angle on you with his strength, it's over. Morange against George. It's Marines with the drop. And when the score is as lopsided as it is, and you can see they smell blood in the water, that man is going for the juggler.
into their bench, Grant, we'll Here probably we see a lot of different looks in terms of rotations. Because of their collective depth, both teams can come at you in waves. Another great luxury about depth, you can keep those fresh legs on the floor pretty much at all times. Now the opening lineup for the Los Angeles Clippers. We've got James Harden. Terrence Mann is out there with P.J. Tucker. Then there's Kawhi Leonard. And it's George in at the two-guard position. And the Clippers have possession. The Sixers getting their last shot to go. And so often you see Harden flip the ball up there off the bounce. So it's cool to see him elevate and hammer it through. And Kawhi Leonard gets a whistle that time. That's his first foul. Maxi against George. Maxi attacking. Here's Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. At seven feet tall, Embiid looks to dunk often, especially when he's got good positioning. George uses the glass to finish the layup. And setting the tempo with an assertive move. Like, where was the defense on that play? Yeah, APB sent out to try to find out where the defense is. Inexcusable. Now here's Maxi. And the foul is called. He missed it, so he's got a couple of free throws coming his way. And the moment MB gets the ball anywhere near the hoop, it's over. Too strong to stop without fouling. And MB drops them both. To have a big who's great at the line, such a plus. And Harden's got the ball here for the LA Clippers. For three, George. Leonard controls the rebound and the putback. Uh, some great hustle points right there from Kawhi. His ability to crash the boards, man, that's valuable. Outside Maxi. Here's Embiid. It's rebounded by George. And he gets a lot of points right there at the rim, but the defense determined not to give up the easy deuce there. Leonard with a screen on Maxi. George scanning the floor. Shot clock at six. It's stolen by Maxi. Here's Embiid. Well timed pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. Embiid's got six points. The player gets a feel for that floater. It can really make things tough on defenders. You're just not sure how to guard him and where your point of commitment is. The drive by Harden. It is so difficult to guard Harden on the drive. Tremendous finishing at the hoop, but he's also elite at drawing fouls. Leonard outside. Pass to George. Leonard with a screen on Maxi. George against Maxi. From downtown. George's shot is off. The 76ers have gone three of five here in the opening quarter. Rejected by George. Always been a tight defender. George not slowing down with age. Harden against Melton. Harden can't hit. And so it's Maxi with it. He brings it up for the 76ers. And now they decide to foul intentionally. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. 157 left now in the first quarter. Maxi with it. And it's Leonard picking him up. Hey, one heck of a crossover there. Maxi's got his second basket. And defensively, you have to make him work harder than this, or it's going to be a long night. Tipped away. Minute 32 left in the first. To the paint. Leonard against Embiid. Over Leonard. Ooh, and he took a hard foul on the shot. And in a game this close, they're going to challenge the call. Coach does not agree with it, and he wants him to take another look at the monitor. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these personal foul calls still disputed even after the previous play. Is a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure they get it right. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. 
And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. Lowry, he's checked in for the Sixers. The free throw drops for Embiid. Molding himself into one of the most dominant centers in the league, Embiid has really come into his own. It's not luck that he's so steady at the line. It's through repetition and hard work. Ooh, took him no time at all to get that one. George has got five now. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, right now, I don't see any let up. I think he's going to just keep putting his foot on that gas pedal today. When they get their opportunity to punch it inside, they don't hesitate. Here's Harden. And then Harden with the jam. I mean, with the ball in his hands, Harden's as creative as anyone. Lowry surveys the D. Driving to the basket. Here's Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. Now that's the kind of passing right there that makes a difference. Not just in that possession, but maybe on your play for the entire game. Now here's Harden. He's got six. The three. And the Clippers hit again from deep. A lights-out three-point shooter. Harden loves to take and make them. Embiid a screen on George. Here's Lowry. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Opportunity for a three-point play here. And once more this half, they find a way to get great position inside. We've got 22 seconds left in the opening quarter. Outside Harden. Here's Leonard on the wing man. Goes back up. And Joel Embiid pulls it down. Right side heel. That's good. And so Lowry with the assist. Well, that's some veteran savvy from Lowry. Just floor awareness and finds the open teammate. And a deep three from Leonard. Joel Embiid. He's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for the Philadelphia. If you're just joining us, we played through one quarter in this one. All right, guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for the 76ers. They've been really going at the defense in the painted area, and so far, the opposition really hasn't had an answer for them. And they've sort of assumed control of this game with their pressure defensively. They've been into the ball handler. They've done a great job of swarming, so they're creating some turnovers that they're capitalizing on. They've got Joel Embiid. Kyle Lowry out there with DeAnthony Melton. Then it's Buddy Heald, and it's Covington in at the four. That's the group in the game for the 76ers. Well, this is exactly how you break down the defense with a really good ball handler as Kyle is just manipulating them right now. Harden with it, guarded by Covington. Knocked away, stolen by Melton. And now the Sixers on the break. Finished off the break. And he got a good look at the hands of Covington. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. And Grant, some players feel like certain officials have it out for them. Did you ever see any of that? You know what, B.A.? The refs are human, too. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> but they're supposed to be impartial. So you go after them for a while, it's possible they will hold a grudge. Bomba's checked in for Philadelphia. Tyrese Maxey comes in for Lowry. George against Bomba. George passes to Leonard. Outside for Harden. Six on the shot clock. Tucker with a screen on Melton. Here's Harden. And give him another one. He's six of eight and looking solid. Yeah, getting it done inside. Harden proves he's more than just a perimeter player. George against Maxi. And he converts the layup. Maxi's got six. He just brings a great feel for the game at the offensive end. The Clippers trail. Hook loose. To the middle. And Harden gets it to go on the assist by Leonard. Well, Leonard usually has humble assist numbers, but that doesn't mean he's not going to keep his eyes open. Pass to Bamba. No good on the shot. Ooh, solid D from Leonard. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Mo Bamba. That's his first personal foul. First team foul. 
We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. Gets the three ball to go. And Tucker, great job reading the floor and finding a way to set up a ready shooter. Here's Maxi. Got it. Makes him four for six from the floor. Now that play never gets old. The pick and roll will still be an offensive staple a hundred years from now. Trust me. Harden surveying the D. And then Harden with the jam. And you can see Harden is feeling it, which is why he's being so aggressive on offense. Maxi against George. And that one falls. His fifth basket in seven tries. Got it in deep, and that's how you do it. And Harden's got the ball here for the Clippers. Four-point game. Leonard outside. Here goes Leonard. Outside for Harden. Leonard with a screen on Melton. Harden the pass to Leonard. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. Wasting zero time. Kawhi Leonard knew what he wanted to do. Here's Maxi. Out to heel. Oh, stolen by Harden. In transition, here come the Clippers. For three, George. Yes, and a nice assist from Harden. Harden's got four assists in the game. Paul George can be dangerous out in transition. Great job finishing there. And Philadelphia calls time here. And the 76ers will have a different look here. Embiid, he's checked in for Bamba. Martin comes in for Covington. Harris is checked in for Heald. And it's Lowry in for Tyrese Maxey. And a switch here also for the Clippers. Westbrook, he's checked in for Paul George. No coverage that time. Lowry's got six. We saw Lowry that time just call for the pick, get himself in a position where he could score. Outside Harden. Slam dunk by Tucker. And nobody putting out much of an effort to stop him. Surprising. In a close game, a lack of energy on defense. On one side, inspiration. On the other, devastation. Hits a three-pointer. All right, guys, what's your take on the hustle stats for the Clippers? Yeah, they're just attacking on defense. Getting those hands out and knocking the ball free. I really like their energy defensively. And they've sort of assumed control of this game with their pressure defensively. They've been into the ball handler. They've done a great job of swarming. So they're creating some turnovers that they're capitalizing on. And that's how you defend. He wasn't showing any mercy with that swap. And this is exactly why he's out here, in order to block shots in tight games like this. Now here's Tucker. Westbrook finds Harden. Back to Westbrook. And then Westbrook slams it in. I mean, it is really like he's jumping off of a trampoline out there. Westbrook can do anything he wants when he gets up like that. Harden against Lowry. 20 seconds left to play in the second quarter. Here's Embiid. Inside, Embiid gets the advantage. Yeah, the big man Embiid, just capable of sticking it from these in-between spots. Harden with it. Leonard outside. Launches a three. And that's not going to go. James Harden, he's been the guy making things happen for Los Angeles. Continued to rack up points in that quarter. His total for the night to 23. And don't go far. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us, we played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. We are seeing an outstanding game from James Harden. And the bulk of his production has been generated along the perimeter. Yeah, he keeps tracking down those spots behind the three-point line and, and finding some open opportunities. Checking out the group for Ty Lu to start the second half. Westbrook and George manning the backcourt. P.J. Tucker is out there with Terrence Mann. And it's Leonard in at the five. Outside Maxi. Outside heel. 
Embiid a screen on Westbrook. Heel from outside. Another three for Philadelphia. Well, that's a guy you want to find, Buddy Heel, with the response from three. It's George on the drive. And the jam by George. Oh, nice feed. On time and on target. Maxi passes to Heel. Healed on the wing. And so it looks like the Sixers will retain possession here. Just a millisecond late. So close to coming up with a steal there. Real close. And I'm sure next time you might time that a little bit better and get a hand on it. Oubre, he's checked in for Melton. Clock at six. Oubre passes to Embiid. And stolen by Leonard. Oh, and the fast break for the Clippers. Kicks it out to Westbrook. George, a screen on Oubre. The drive by Westbrook. The three is up. And the Clippers hit again from deep. Making the most of his three-point chances. That's Tucker just spotted up and ready to go. Maxi passes to Embiid. Embiid muscles through the contact. Yeah, he's leading the charge for them. But let's be honest, he needs more help if they're going to get out in front. Yeah, doing anything he can right now to get his team to cut into this lead and give them a chance. Here's George. Oh, and the dunk by George! Well, Paul George demonstrating how elite he can be. It's a little tricky that time. I love it. Outside Maxi, The three ball. And the 76ers, another three. Easy look when the defender isn't fighting over the screen. The coach over there just asking for one simple thing, and that's some effort. Got burned on that one. Now here's George. He's got 15. Here's Westbrook. Oh, and there's the whistle. And coach doesn't like the call at all. He's opting to use his challenge. He wants the officials to look at the replay. People were worried that this would slow the action down. But with so many... Two shots. Adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back up. Have to review the ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call the will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. And the 76ers with some changes. Melton comes in for Oubre, and it's Kyle Lowry in for Maxi. First free throw is good. Russell Westbrook just out there and focused, trying to find ways in which he can help out his team to secure any win. Martin, he's checked in for the Sixers. James Harden, he's checked in for Los Angeles. Now here's Lowry. He has six. Plenty of daylight on that shot. Lowry's got nine points. Terrific effort from him, really, all night. Yet, despite his supreme marksmanship, they're still operating at a deficit. Harden. And Harden with the slam! <laughs> Check it out. Harden putting on a show, throwing down an acrobatic dunk. To the inside. Here's Embiid. And Embiid fires it home! He's just too quick to the cup. No one near him to get poster. Lowry against Westbrook. And he drives in. Leonard for three. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. And Russell right now playing heads up, looking for guys. Lowry against Leonard. Lowry, the pass to Embiid. Oh, a grown man move from Embiid. Sometimes, with that much of a height advantage, resistance is futile. Here's Westbrook. Westbrook drawing the double. 116 left to play in the third quarter here. Back to man. The Clippers got a hurry. Late clock here. I have no clue why he pulled up from there. At this point in the game, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, the, the bloopers, right? Boy, that foul looked intentional. Not exactly what you'd expect here. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't make sense, given the situation. Pass to Lowry. 
Harden against Heal. Embiid is screen on Harden. Inside. And then Embiid with the dunk. And credit Buddy on that play. The correct read setting up his teammate. And it's Harden. Oh, and he's got his wow. timing down. Can you say immediate entry into the highlight reel? Ooh, what a tough VA. <laughs> it's showtime now, man. They've built up a lead, and they're starting to rub it in. Timeout called, the 76ers. And the players take this opportunity to get some Gatorade. Getting some fluids in you is so important during these timeouts. Get fresh, keep those batteries charged. Yeah, without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a ball game. And that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have to be hydrated. <laughs> Did you see that? Look at the elevation on that dunk, B.A. Man, he just cocked it back and fired it down with one hand. Here's Zubats. Banked it in off the glass. And the Clippers lead by six. Just two determined Zubats finishing strong. Harris, a screen on George. Maxi, that's good. Maxi's got seven now in this quarter. Love his shot selection. Good at taking quality shots. Whether he's defended or open, time out, time out. he knows how to knock those down. Timeout called. The Clippers. Eight seconds left to play in the third. Outside Harden. And offensively, a great show for the fans through the first three quarters. It's been a fun game. And while we have a chance, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. This is the definition of team chemistry. I love to see this kind of communication and connection between teammates leading to the perfect pass. The coaches talk about it all the time, but to be able to play with that kind of feel, nice play collaborating, improvising, and organic. And with these teams locked in a very close contest, this fourth quarter promises to be a good one. Maxi runs point with Melton at the two. Joel Embiid is out there with Robert Covington. And it's Heal in at the three. That's the group in the game for the 76ers. Who poked away and stolen by Covington. And stolen by Leonard. Harden with it. And Melton picks him up defensively. Harden against Melton. Harden the pass to Leonard. Now George. Leonard with a screen on heel. For three, George. It's hauled in by the Sixers. Embiid's got a sixth rebound on the night. And now we've got an intentional foul. That's his second personal foul. Second team foul. Fourth quarter just getting started. One minute in the books. Embiid a screen on George. Maxi passes to Embiid. Oh, George with a steal. I just don't love the passing angle there. Might have been better to reset. Leonard, left side, from deep. Yes, and a nice assist from Harden. Three points. And the Clippers lead by five. All right, guys, what's your take on the hustle stats for the Clippers? Well, their D has been a major story tonight. I mean, those steals and putting pressure on the ball, clogging the passing lanes, impressive. Something else I've seen from them in this game is just how quick they are to capitalize on a turnover. I mean, they're pouncing on that stuff. And you've got to be careful when you're handling the ball around. Knocks it down from distance. <laughs> just incredible. I mean, he's really making it rain out there. Knocking time out, time them out. down one after another. Kind of like he's in his living room right now. He's found a comfort zone. Once he gets that, the defense knows they're in trouble. Gives us a chance to catch up with Allie LaForce. Guys, over the last break, I listened to Tyron Lue address the team. And despite the lead, they are still coaching this team hard. In the huddle, they told their guys to stay alert. Do not give them anything easy. They want to protect this late lead, VA. Okay, good stuff. Thank you, Allie. Maxi passes to Embiid. The kick out to Maxi. The 
makes a mark. Another shot. And Embiid throws it down. And that's the hunger that Embiid plays with. He just gobbles up the miss and goes back up for the score. Tucker with a screen on Embiid. Leonard passes to Harden. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. Their strategy has been pretty simple here in the second half. Attack from three-point range. Maybe trying to find a little bit more space and ball movement to get guys open at the three-point. And that's an intentional foul. That's his first personal foul. First team foul. Just over two and a half minutes played now. Final quarter of regulation. George against Covington. Oh, and another three for the Clippers. And their strategy is obvious. Manufacture looks from outside the arc. And I don't know how they keep doing this, but every time down, the resulting possession ends up at the three-point line in a fairly efficient shot attempt at that. Now that's how you capitalize on a screen. Yeah, good positioning, too. Gave him a clear path to the hoop. Really not enough help there. Lack of communication on the backside. Shot clock at six. George passes to Leonard. Yes, and it's George picking up the assist. George has got three assists in the game. Yeah, that's a shot most guys are just not even going to take. But Leonard is confident in that team. Yeah, that's one way to get back into this game. Keep getting him the ball and let him make the shots. Harden, the pass to George. Let's go with a three. And the Clippers hit again from deep. And George has been assertive in this one, shouldering the load offensively. Maxi surveys. It's Covington on the wing. Covington, a screen on George. It's good. Maxi's got 15 points here in the second half. Plays like that, so easy for him. And the clock will wind down on this one. Just a solid effort and a good win for the Clippers. Well, they were focused on being productive at the arc tonight. And it ended up paying off big time. Just an overwhelming performance. And what a huge performance it was for James Harden. And with all these assists, it's obvious how well that he can see the entirety of the floor out there. If an easy bucket is to be had, go find it. Hanging on the rim, just showing off. <laughs> That's how you extend the glory right there. George for three. The rebound by Embiid. Yeah, and the defense has really got to tighten up on him. I mean, he's just too dangerous from the three-point line. And Embiid throws it down. Flat out dominant. Joel Embiid having his way tonight. On offense, here are the Clippers. They held a 12-point lead earlier. George outside. Fires, high post, and again, it's the Clippers converting. George showing the length and the lift to get to the mid-range. Here's Maxi. Oh, and makes it with the kiss. This dude is capable of some memorable...
Great butting heads in this one. How does that raise the stakes here? Well, both teams want this one bad. And, and a chance to prove they're the dominant squad. I, I think it's going to get pretty heated at some point here tonight. Well, look at the 76ers starting group. And at the guard spots, Maxie and Melton. Robert Covington out there with Buddy Heald. And it's Embiid in at the five. Now Maxie. After Jalen Brunson missing on that last three-pointer. Here's a chew up. Passes to Randall. Ananobi is screen on Covington. Randall kicks to Brunson. Five on the clock. That's in. Coming off an assist from Randall. Just good on ball decision making from Brunson right there. This guy a master in the pick and roll. And Bede sets the pick for Maxi. To the paint and stolen by Achua. And a fast break now for New York. Outside for Randall. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, but not exactly logical. <laughs> How about pointless to foul there? I mean, I don't know where his head is, but it's not in the game. Now here's Brunson. Ananobi passes to Brunson. Randall is screen on Melton. Brunson with a clean look. And again, New York with the triple. One of the things you love about Jalen Brunson, he takes quality shots. How about that look for three? Well, Doris thinking about last season for the Knicks, clearly a step forward. Well, Kevin, you have to consider it a win because you go ahead and advance in the playoffs for just the second time since their 99 finals run. Adding Jalen Brunson to the mix was obviously a great decision. This looks like an organization moving in exactly the direction you hope. Now, this is what makes Jalen Brunson special. You've got to knock down contested shots. Mr. Brunson up to the task. Here's Maxi. He gets it in there. Just setting the tone with an aggressive move to the rag. And, and where's the help defensively? To me, that's a complete lack of communication on that side of the ball. These guys need to be talking to each other. Oh, he had him spinning. He looks like he's dizzy after that crossover. Ananobi against Maxi. High post, MB to the middle. And Embiid throws it down. Oof, what a scary sight. Joel Embiid with all that momentum taking it to the hoop. Looking like a freight train. Now here's Brunson. Ten points for him. It's in and he's a very efficient five for six in the game. Well, that, that's one way he can finish. But far from the only way he gets it done. He's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. Maxi passes to Embiid. Covington kicks to Maxi. Melton sets a screen for Maxi. That's in. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivering. They know that if this guy goes off, their chances of winning rise exponentially. And the Anthony Melton picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And the 76ers making a change here. Bowers checked in. Brunson, good. Yeah, simply stated. Jalen Brunson filling it up right now. There are no signs that he's slowing down anytime soon. Healed outside. That's in. Coming off an assist from Lowry. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. Well, that three-point shot just gives you so much room to operate on the offensive end. Smart. That's good. That's just outstanding floor awareness from Jalen Brunson. Doesn't matter if he's at the one or the two. He always makes the right play. Lowry passes to Embiid. And pushing it up. Here's New York. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose? Greg, I'm not sure. A, a, a scene of confusion right there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. And you look at the evolution of Ananobi's game, Doors. He's much more than a 3-and-D guy. 
You know, Kevin, here's a young man who does a little bit of everything. He can score and defend in a variety of ways, cross-positional defensively between one and four, and an offensive game that continues to grow. He can get out and put pressure on transition. Little bit of a streaky shooter, but there's so much to like. Outside for Randall. Knocks it loose. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. And they're great at both ends, but the Sixers offense, Greg, the Sixers offense is elite. And it all starts with Joel Embiid feasting inside and at the free throw line. And his teammates reap the benefits as well with wide open shots on the perimeter. Now, here's Ananobi. They grab their own miss. On deep, Brunson. It's good again in an excellent seventh grade shooting night so far. He's found his rhythm from deep, and, and you can see the confidence. And I think the defender knows once he gets cooking, look out. The bucket looks awfully big to him right now. Well, he's got a great stroke. That one almost dropped. Randall is screen on Melton. On deep, Brunson. And the Knicks hit again from deep. Yeah, we're seeing some fireworks from them already. Well, what I love is the game plan has been solid from the opening tip. And guys are making their shots. That's critical. And this game already taking shape as an offensive battle. Well, the fans love it. Coaches may not like the lack of defense, but boy, the rules promote scoring, no doubt. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. One guy who's been getting it done is Jalen Brunson. Yeah, I think they've got to be talking about just guarding him a little more tightly on the perimeter or keep the ball out of his hands as much as possible, period. That's about the only way you're going to cool this guy off. And so it's New York ahead by nine as the quarter comes to a close. They've done... And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And guys, what do you think about the hustle stats here for New York? And just a great job so far applying pressure defensively. The opposition is on their heels with the ball in their hand. Nightmares clamps thus far. You've also got to love the way they've been crashing the offensive glass. Multiple opportunities, not giving up on possessions. Beautiful. We've got Ananobi. Nashard out there with Jalen Brunson. And then there's Precious Achua. And it's Randall in at the power forward. That's the five for New York right now. Here's Randall driving inside. He's now one for two with that bucket. We know that Julius Randall loves to put it on the deck. Off the dribble drive, boy, he can be tough to deal with. to Embiid, back to Maxi. Embiid sets the pick for Maxi. He feeds it to Embiid. Not a piece of it. Randall outside, driving to the basket. And Randall throws it down. Randall has got excellent handles, so you have to respect him off the dribble drive. Embiid sets the pick for Maxi. Embiid punches it down. That's what we call a power finish. There's no such thing as gentle for the big man. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter now. Brunson against Maxi. And it is flushed down with a nice jam. We love the effort Brunson puts into creating for others, working to make sure the defense is manipulated there. It's tipped. We know Doris officiating is always going to be a point of contention, but some teams let it affect them more than others. And, and Kevin, that can obviously have a major difference in so many of the games. And for me, a lot of times it comes down to maturity. Teams that dwell on calls are going to have issues, particularly in big games. Let the coach worry about the officials. You play. Stolen away. With a short break in the action, gives us a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. The Knicks are one of the most efficient offensive teams in the league, and that, of course, starts with getting the right looks. Coach Tom Thibodeau says we know what the value shots are. If you don't have one, how can you help create one? 
Whether that's attacking the rim, screen off the ball, or do things that can help us create the shots that I have high value. Kevin? Yeah, a disciplined approach. David, thanks. Maxi with it. Hard covering. Back to Maxi. Lock at six. MB the screen. Maxi kicks to MB. Too tough inside. And just so tough to knock Embiid off the block. And that's his territory. Hey, Doris, you grew up in New York. And here we go. Coach's challenge happening right now. This one in regards to the personal foul. Seeing that that was the right call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult two shots, the previous play is under review. It's so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively. And after the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. Pass to Embiid. On the wing, Melton. Embiid with a screen on Brunson. Covington kicks to Heald. Now here's Embiid. Covered by Achua. And he gets it to go. And it looks like, yep, it's a coach's challenge on the personal foul. That triggers a replay review by the official. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, previous play is really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. And the announcement on the review is that the, the foul goes. was called in air. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. And the pass to Ananope. Nope. This one for three. A shot's good on the assist by Brunson. ananobi has got five points so far. Time out. Don't give OG Ananobi too much space, boy. He will rise and fire in the catch-and-shoot game. Timeout called the 76ers. Who wants a Huttenstein checked in for New York. Dante DiVincenzo comes in for OG Ananobi. Reed is checked in for the 76ers. Tobias Harris comes in for Buddy Heal. Harris setting the pick for Maxi. Harris outside. Kicks it out to Maxi. Traps in the tray. Maxi's got four points in the quarter. And credit Harris for creating that high percentage look, scanning the floor and finding the best option. Hartenstein passes to Brunson. Inside, and he caught that pass in full stride on his way to the big slam. Not the kind of aggressive defense they need to cut into the lead. Yeah, you have to protect the rim, Greg, a little better. They're just too slow to react. You can't afford to sleepwalk through possessions. What's going on out there? Goes up on the wing, and again, it's New York. I think in today's NBA, you've got to be a three-level scorer. The midi is good for Jalen Brunson. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. It's good. Nice touch there from Maxi. He's got 10. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Runs in the pass to Hartenstein. That's a two from Randall. And there are the Knicks with another bucket. Boy, when we talk about guys taking that step, improving their game, Julius Randle, the example of this, he worked so hard on that jump shot. Well, so great when your offense produces a shot that close to the rim. The rest of the work becomes easier. It could go. And so it's the New York Knicks sitting with a comfortable lead up by 14. Well, all right, Dave, thank you. And time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2K Sports.
And there wasn't too much drama in the first half, but maybe things will tighten up here in the second. You know, Jalen Brunson has been exceptional here, guys. Wow. And the way that he has helped out with the ball movement has been a difference maker early on. I don't know that you necessarily think of him as someone who's going to create for others, but boy, all night he's been willing to make the extra pass. And on the floor for Nick Nurse as we get into the second half. They've got Lowry. Heald is out there with Robert Covington. Then it's DeAnthony Melton. And it's Embiid in at the five spot. And now the fast break. Embiid with the ball. It's good. Embiid's got 12 in the game. Well, no question. Joel Embiid is page one on the scouting report. Maybe page two and three as well. He is a handful. DiVincenzo passes to Hartenstein. Let's the three fly. The rebound by Heal. The 76ers trail by 12. Doris amongst the best we've ever seen from the Bahamas, Buddy Heal. Really think about it, Kevin. Buddy Heal, DeAndre Ayton, Kai Jones. We're seeing a few very successful men. And let's not forget about John Paul Jones, MVP in the WNBA. She grew up training with Heal in the Bahamas. Oubre is checked in for DeAnthony Melton. The Knicks have gone two for two in the game at the line. It seems to me Julius Randle improves every season, and the more responsibility he's given, it seems the better he performs. Embiid with a screen on DiVincenzo. Heald can't hit. The Knicks leading by 15, and a fast break now for New York. The feed now to Randle. New York moving the ball around. It's stolen by Lowry. And now the 76ers on the break. The 76ers with another miss. New York's gone 6 of 11 when they're taking the three-point shot tonight. Very respectable. Outside for Randall. Passes it to Hart. Here's McBride. Over Lowry. McBride's shot is off. And so Lowry will bring it up for Philadelphia. Since the second half started, they've only given up three points. And B, the screen. Heald. And he converts the layup. Heald's got five points so far. Well, the ability to stay nimble on the dribble drive. Buddy Heald making a nice adjustment there. Pass to Hartenstein. Lowry against DiVincenzo. Pass to McBride. Plays it up off the glass. McBride's got his first points of the game. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. Bounce pass from Lowry. And stolen by DiVincenzo. There's the killer two-handed slam. Well, if you don't take care of the ball, tell us that's what can happen. Absolutely, Greg. That makes the turnover even more painful. At the end of the day, though, it's two points. Don't hang your heads. Let's get refocused and play with more patience. Let's check in with our reporter, David Aldrin. Thank you, Kevin. As ever, Joel Embiid has the pressure on him to be the franchise player. He said it's not an easy job. If it was easy, everybody would do it. When you're actually the best offensive player and the best defensive player, you've got to make plays. You can't be perfect. All I can do is try to do my best every game. Kevin? Well said. His best DA is pretty great, isn't it? Thank you so much for the report. Embiid sets the pick for Lowry with the drive. <laughs> If you're a point guard in this league, you've got to have a change of pace game. Kyle Lowry, boy, when he does that, the call is going to go his way. The 76ers have shot two free throws, and they're one of two so far. And one of the highlights last year for this group was the fact that they were so efficient from the charity strike. That's a huge factor. The 76ers making a switch here. All reads checked in for Joel Embiid. Kenyon Martin Jr. comes in for Robert Covington. Harris is checked in for Heal, and it's DeAnthony Melton in for Kelly Oubre. Harris a screen on DiVincenzo. A three ball. Oh, drew the foul and almost hit the three-point bucket, but he'll go to the line to shoot three. And whenever Harris is aggressive like this, I think it's 
for the best because he has that ability to attract contact. And the 76ers making a change here. Maxi's checked in, and he nails the third. And, Greg, while the Sixers have been effective time and again, they've been unable to get past the conference semifinal. Where they bowed out in five of the last six years, but you go back, they haven't made it any further since Allen Iverson led them to the finals back in 01. Brunson, good. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flame. One thing I enjoy is watching players who don't pay attention to the score. You lock in on the moment and play the right way. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And Bogdanovich kicks to Ananobi. Jacks up a three. That ball. Nice feed that time from Bogdanovich. Ananobi's got eight points. Nice job by OG Ananobi to be aggressive from distance. Harris outside. There's the three. He's off on that one. So it's the New York Knicks. Their lead at 15 going into the break. Everything's. And a quick look now at the State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them. And what a beautiful feat. Nothing better than chemistry, right? Working together to create a bucket. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today. As we get going in quarter number four, we've got Bogdanovich, Jalen Brunson out there with Dante DiVincenzo. Then it's OG Ananobi. And it's Achua in at the pivot, manning the middle. That's the five for New York right now. And that's a little lack of fight at the defensive end. Uh, absolutely. At least on that slam, you're right. That's one way to let a team back in the game. Right, you can see on that possession, one side playing with a little desperation, the other side losing focus. And that one drops. And the Knicks lead by 15. Well, how about the court awareness from Bogdanovich showing off his ability to find the open man, Kev? Down low, here's Martin, and finished off by Martin. Well, not exactly one of those big, burly power forwards, right? He depends on his leaping ability more than those guys, and it serves him just fine. And Brunson, here we go. Count it. Brunson's got 30. Well, this is the very definition of Jalen Brunson's game, his ability to get past defenders and create for himself or his teammates. That is nicely done. Here's Maxi. It falls for his seventh bucket of the contest. He's seven for nine. Well, as usual, this guy cooking on the offensive end, but right now the other guys on his team have got to step forward. Runs in the pass to DiVincenzo. And he takes that one up and powers it through. Well, you have to love how Jalen Brunson orchestrates this offense. So good at getting the ball where it needs to be. And Philadelphia calls time here for the Knicks. Julius Randle comes in for Bogdanovich. And it's Josh Hart in for Dante DiVincenzo. Then for the 76ers, Embiid, he's checked in for Paul Reed. Robert Covington comes in for Martin. And it's Buddy Heald in for Harris. And now the latest from our reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, guys. During the last time out, I listened to Nick Nurse talk to his team. Now, his tone was pretty serious. He said, you guys need to prove you're in this. No one else can do it for you. Time to pour on the gas. We'll see if that fire gets lit, guys. Thank you, David. Here's Ananobi. Uses the glass to finish the way. And the penetrating ability of Ananobi. Confident when it comes to attacking the defense. That one's in there. The next lead is cut down to 13. Good bucket there for Maxi. Boy, the bucket's been five feet wide for him. He's dropping everything in. And so it's Brunson with it. He brings it up for the Knicks. 17 points was their biggest margin. And Robert Covington picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. First team foul. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. Here's Hananobi. And there's the pass to Hart. Going inside. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle. And now a three-point play chance here for him. 
big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. And that's typical of this guy. He's always reading the situation, reacting quickly, and capitalizing. Here's Maxi. Ananobi sends it back. OG Ananobi is fast off his feet. Seven foot two wingspan says twice on the pipes. And an intentional foul right there. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. Around three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Here's Brunson, and the layup is good. Brunson's got four this quarter. Late in the game, up big, they continue to attack. And as a result, they may be facing just a little bit less resistance right now. They are having their way. And not allowing the shooter even an inch of breathing room on that one. Right. He stays connected, and great timing on the contest. Brunson against Melton. Brunson, no good. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. And Robert Covington picks up the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. I'm not sure what he thought he could get away with there. Pretty clear over the back. Yeah, easy call for the officials. Sometimes I think you think you can reach over without making contact, but that was not one of those times. Rando passes to on an open. He takes it in, and Ananobi slams it in. And then, guys, what we saw here tonight is one side having everything going for them. Huge margin of victory for the Knicks. The sheer volume of three-pointers was the deciding factor tonight at C. Yeah, they, they sink one and, and then do it again, and that strategy did work. And what a tremendous standout performance it was for Jalen Brunson. What a relentless scoring night for this guy. In attack mode all evening. Passes it to Embiid from the arc. Connects from three-point range. Well, this is what they needed earlier on. At some point, it's too little, too late. Yeah, but then again, this run came against a team that may have felt it had already won, and you get the sense it let its guard down. Here's Brunson with the drive, and the shot goes in. Brunson's got 34 points. Making every effort to put this game on ice. Well, just terrific teamwork. Each guy doing his part. You love what you're seeing from them tonight. Here's Maxi. Another three for Philadelphia. Well, this guy has made giant strides in his playmaking. Nice setup by Buddy Heald right there. Eight second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Out to Brunson. Knocks down the three ball. And you can sense that these fans, these players, they are ready to celebrate. Well, for all intents and purposes, this game is over. Just a matter of time here. And it goes out of bounds. That one off hard. A split second late, but almost came up with a steal there. Absolutely appreciate the effort, though. He really went after it so close. Healed the pass to Embiid. Great pass to set up the lay-in. And showcasing that overwhelming strength. Embiid is so skilled at finishing over the aggressive defense. Ananobi off the mark. Sonopa.
play, these teams both methodical. You know, both teams are methodical and deliberate. I mean, they're comfortable, of course, operating in the half court, and they'll push the ball selectively when those opportunities present themselves. And to look at the starters for the Knicks. Julius Randle out there with Achua. Then it's Josh Hart. Then there's Jalen Brunson. And it's Ananobi in at the three. Count the basket. Brunson doesn't fear going in amongst the trees. Remarkable poise there inside. Anthony against Hart. And he banks in the layup. Anthony's got this second bucket. Making a statement here early. Going right to the rack. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's how he rolls. I mean, intimidate the opponent right now. A flashy ball handler at times. Brunson knows how to carve up scoring opportunities for himself. And Carroll lays it up and in off the pretty assist. Just taking it right to the rim. And no one was there to greet him. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. Now here's Achua. Now here's Ananobi. Outside for Randall. Three-pointer. It's hauled in by Isaac. The Magic have gone three of three so far from the floor. Here's Anthony. That one goes. Count it. Anthony's got six. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. And you know what? They're going to keep using it. I mean, he'll be the centerpiece of their offense today. You can bank on that. The Magic have gone four of four from the floor. Perfect start. The last few seasons, the Knicks have had a defensive-minded approach. And that's been the key for them getting back into the postseason, B.A. I mean, they play great team defense and pride themselves on getting stops. The Knicks have gone two for five here in the first. Achua with a screen. Here in the first quarter, with about two minutes gone by. And though he has a scorer's mindset, Brunson willing to make the next pass. Pass to Wagner. Takes it inside. Randall with some nice D. Boy, that defense smothered him in there. Love the intensity. Achua with a screen on Anthony. Mark passes to Achua. And stolen by Anthony. The three. Drills it from deep. Nine points in the game. Excellent defense from Anthony. Impressive job reading the opponent and coming away with that steal. Down low. Here's Ananobi. And there's the slam. Dunk to finish it off. Seems to have a knack for hitting guys in their spots. His vision excellent. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. And when it comes to efficiency, Anthony's strongest suit is at the line. Well, so much length and versatility on this Magic roster, Clark. And, you know, those are two things every team would like to have, Brian. The first step of a rebuild is accumulating talent. They've got some of that. Now it's about coalescing that talent. And here comes the coach's challenge. He disagrees with the foul. He does not hesitate to ask for a second look. It's a pretty heated game. Every call matters. People were worried that this two challenges in every game. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his play. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. The refs take another look. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. First quarter of play, and we're about three minutes in. Brunson passes to Achua. Back to Brunson. Shot clock at five. Drops in the three. Brunson's got eight points. Pretty much the second Brunson gets the ball, he's into motion, and that's how it's done. It's Suggs with a drive. Count it. One for one to start the game. Love to see that kind of activity. He just makes things happen. And so it's Hart with it. He brings it up for New York. It's a three-point game. On the take. And he goes strong with the one-handed jam. And he gives up some size inside, but makes a great adjustment on the finish. Yeah, you know, with that size difference, that's not an easy shot. I mean, I don't care how close to the rim he is, that's a tough shot. 
And he's a strong man. Isaac so physical getting to the bucket. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not sure why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Yeah, but that's no excuse for that kind of foul. I mean, that might be an explanation for it, but certainly doesn't justify it. And even then, it's uh, just not a good play. Brunson, he's got it. Four for four now. He's automatic. And you like the balance here. Not just falling in love with the three ball. Anthony, the pass to Ben Carroll. It's rebounded by New York. Right side, Brunson. And the officials will call the illegal screen here. The screener was leaning a bit right there. His feet may not have been planted. Pretty obvious call by the officials. Yeah, I agree. You know, sometimes that can be a tough call for the refs to make, but not that time. It was easy there. Here's Anthony. Oh, oh, nice. oh big finish. Man. This has been Anthony's night for sure. Everything going exactly right for him at the offensive end. Here's Brunson. Good on the shot. He's got 12. I know it's early, but you have to wonder if these offenses can keep this up. High octane action for sure. Crowd pleasing already. There's a four second difference from the shot clock to the game clock. And Anthony slams it in. A nice mix and blend of speed and control on the drive. Anthony gets right where he wants to be. Pass to Achua. Here's Randall. Back to Achua. With one on the clock. Ooh, he released it in time, but it's off the mark. Cole Anthony, he's been the guy making things. And some good action in the books as we get back to a game that's been pretty close so far here. And for the Magic guys, what jumps out to you stat-wise? Well, their offense is clicking so far, capturing the momentum here early on. Yeah, you know, I agree. No warm-up needed. They came in on fire and have already built a nice lead. And the Knicks with the possession here. They trail by three. In the backcourt, it's Anthony and Suggs. Isaac and Wagner make up the forwards. And it's Ben Carroll in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. That's who's out there for Orlando. Back to Randall. And it's Randall with the jam. Power and mobility of Randall. That combination makes it really hard to cover him on the pick and roll. The end of the 2023 season was a rough stretch for a young Orlando Magic squad, Clark. Always hard, B.A., to close out a season on a losing streak and in the bottom part of your conference. It's a tough learning opportunity, even for veteran guys. Achua with a screen on Anthony. Brunson finds Ananobi. Six on the shot clock. Brunson passes to Hart. Yes, and a nice assist from Brunson. You know, getting inside and doing damage there really elevates Hart's game, and I'd like to see him be... Oh, my goodness! Disrespectful. Oh, man. He got fancy with that finish. <laughs> he may be trying to provide the spark they need to break this one open. And I like it. I mean, some coaches might want to see just a sure-handed lay-in there, but for me, I don't mind a little extra. Boy, from the looks of it, it appears the defense is fine with him taking that shot, but he makes them pay when they do. And for some reason, he decided to foul there. Yeah, B.A., that's an odd move. Maybe there's something else behind it. And just about a minute and a half has passed here in the second quarter. Here's Brunson to the middle. Rob! Oh, and a fast break for the Magic. Three-pointer, Anthony. And again, it's the Magic from Pete. You just know from a very young age, Cole Anthony's been perfecting that three-point shot. Maybe like his dad. His dad was kind of a pedestrian three-point shooter. The long-range missile from Brunson. Man, this is just fun. These teams are trading threes back and forth. Nothing like answering back. One team gets three, you fire three of your own. Boom. He's been playing great unselfish basketball, really putting the rock in the hands of the right shooters. He is delivering a lot of room service times tonight. One sweet one after another. 
Achua with a screen on Wagner. And an Obi for three. And the Knicks, another three. And with players like Moran and Giannis last season getting undercut around the rim, would you support moving the charge circle out of foot, Grant? You know, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't see why not. The league wants more highlights and less injuries, so it seems to make a lot of sense to me. A capable floor general. I love watching Anthony set up his teammates. Brunson with it. Wagner picks him up. Sneak it inside. It's Brunson. They're punishing those late defensive rotations. Getting good looks inside throughout the half. Oh, man. Carroll throws it down. Making sure of it with the two-hand slam, B.A. Yeah, I don't blame him. With the score this tight, you cannot take a chance here. I get the feeling, guys, that he may be sensing that this is a critical time in this game. Here's Brunson. Great finish inside by Brunson. And no matter how the D's coming at him tonight, Brunson has adapted. And that's what great scores do. They figure it out. Good work there as it goes. Wagner's got five points in the quarter. I like that. Punch it inside. You usually end up with a good shot and or get fouled. Brunson passes to Achua. Achua with the dunk. Brunson with a sixth sense. I mean, always knows where his teammates are. Ooh, and they immediately answer back with a dunk on the other end. Impressive one-hand slam right there, B.A. Man, as long as he's confident about it, I'm good with it. Maybe use two hands next time. He knows where he is. Somebody you can count on. He is an extremely reliable finish. And you just can't let Brunson get to his spots. I mean, he's an excellent mid-range shooter. Anthony, the pass to Ben Carroll. Ooh, Ben Carroll getting it done and tight. Where's the rim protection? That's just too easy for him. And so it's Brunson with it. He brings it up for New York. Trailing by two. Achua with a screen. Brunson passes to Achua. And an Obi for three. It's hauled in by Isaac. Orlando's gone three of three from outside here in this one. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Randall against Wagner. Hey, I can't fake it, fellas. I mean, Franz Wagner, 6'9", can make threes, mobile, agile. I'm actually glad I'm just sitting back watching these guys instead of trying to guard them. Free throw good, Wagner. That's also good, so he hits both free throws. He's as solid as it gets from the line. I mean, give him the opportunity. He's cashing in on those. Pass to Achua. And here's Hart. Here's McBride. Now here's Bogdanovich. And it's New York with another. Man, you let Bogdanovich just catch and shoot like that, he'll make more than he misses of those. Orlando calls timeout. Attention fans, now on the court is your height squad. Get loud and let them hear it. And so a close game as we wrap up the first half of play. Magic out in front, up by two. Thanks, Allie. After the break, we'll see you right back here to begin quarter number three. After a fairly even first couple of quarters, this second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams trying to gain an edge. Out, you look at Jalen Brunson. What a contribution. Yeah, they've done an amazing job of creating room to operate for him. And then, of course, executing. You know what? It helped that they had a few guys with very hot hands on the perimeter, too. Time called here. The Magic decide to talk it over. New York trailing on the floor for New York. They've got Isaiah Hardenstein, Boyan Bogdanovich out there with OG Ananobi. Then there's Alec Burks, and it's McBride in at the point. Ben Carroll passes to Suggs. And a 
a nice finish on the layup. Suggs has got his second basket of the game. Really good concentration from Suggs there. Pretty good body control, too. In the early stretch of his career, Clark, Jalen Suggs has had a tough go of it. Yeah, you know, injuries are an ugly part of the game, B.A., and he's had to overcome quite a bit here early in his career. Such a promising young talent. But I do believe when you look at the long road in front of him, that he's going to show you how special a player he is. And talk about a star from day one, Clark. Paolo Bancaro. You know, B.A., I love this kid's game. He's got great confidence, terrific body. He's relentless, plays with a lot of energy. And offensively, there's not much he can't do. I mean, he rebounds, he competes on defense. Boy, I like a lot about this young man's game. And an Obi for three. It's rebounded by Bancaro. Surprising to see him miss here, but they'll be happy with that shot in most possessions. For three. And again, it's the magic from deep. Their offense has been unstoppable, just firing on all cylinders. And, you know, the lead just keeps growing. I mean, this game is not going to get out of their grip. They're going to keep pulling away. And the magic making a change here. Carter's checked in. And Anobi finds Bogdanovich. To end the run. Oh, wow. Drew the contact, and that three almost went in. So he'll go to the line for three free throws. You know, you look at Bogdanovich, and this guy is really outstanding at taking high percentage shots, and he's got what I call a natural scoring ability and mentality. Paolo Bancaro, he's checked in for Carter, and he nails the third. Orlando has got all four threes to drop from downtown in this game. And so it looks like it'll be Orlando's ball still. And they barely get to retain possession. Many times, that's a turnover. Carter, he's checked in for Ben Carroll. Suggs, the pass to Carter. Oh, and he blocks it off the glass. Wow. To the paint. Here's McBride. And he gets that one. McBride's got his first points of the game. When it's this close, every bucket matters. You need good looks. They set the pick. Pass to Carter. Here's Houston. Fires the three. The rebound by Bogdanovich. And we're just about two minutes into the final half of play now. Burks passes to Hartenstein. Hartenstein a screen. To the inside. Kicks it out to Ananobi. Outside Bogdanovich. And Hartenstein gets it to go. Good things come to those who hustle. He creates the second chance opportunity. Left side Fultz. And yep, it's good. And the Magic lead by six. And, you know, Fultz is highly skilled as an offensive player. When he gets this kind of position in inside, it's a wrap. Pass to Hartenstein. Outside Burks. And he takes the feed in stride and slams it home. <laughs> and plays like that one can make the difference in a close game. And it definitely got the bench on their feet, too. Making a statement for sure. I mean, we'll see if they can maintain that aggressive approach, guys. Timeout called, the Knicks. So Orlando going with an almost entire new group here. Thank you. Arrows checked in for Carter. Franz Wagner comes in for Houston. Isaac, he's checked in for Suggs. And Anthony subbed in for Fultz. A big group substitution here for New York. Achua's checked in for Hartenstein. Julius Randle comes in for Bogdanovich. DiVincenzo, he's checked in for Ananobi. And Brunson is subbed in for McBride. Anthony against DiVincenzo. Kicks it out to Isaac. Harris outside. The shot off that time. Ooh, excellent D there from Burks. 
Wagner against Brunson. Achua with a screen on Wagner. Pass to Achua. The kick out to Brunson. Down to five on the shot clock. Brunson assertive on the take. Oh, and makes it with the kiss. Brunson's got four points now in the quarter. They're making smart adjustments, setting guys up for success. It's certainly been an impressive run. They finally found the right formula to break down the defense. And Carroll. And yes, it's good. He's seven for eight now. Well, I love Van Carroll's overall game because it's terrific. I like to see him taking over, too, as an alpha dog leading the way, going and getting his. That's impressive. Burks, a screen on Harris. Here's Brunson outside. It's rebounded by Van Carroll. And so Van Carroll will bring it up for the Orlando Magic. They've led by as much as 10. Here's Anthony. Well placed jumper from the free throw line. Now it's a six-point Orlando lead. Nice, smooth jump shot from Anthony. I like him in that medium-range area. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And here's Brunson from the arc. Here's Achua. Achua with the dunk. <laughs> and when the game is this close... You have to go all out. He certainly understands his role, huh? When the shot goes up, just crashes the offensive glass. You know, that time I thought he did it with authority. Tremendous putback at a time when they really need it. Inside, here's Wagner, and he dunks it down. Wagner able to bounce to the rack and throw it down, and he'll do so just about any time he has the opportunity. Timeout, timeout. Orlando calls timeout. Adjustments are a part of every game, in every quarter of a game. I think Coach sees something here. And you know what? We'll see what changes he makes coming out of this timeout. Here's Anthony. Shots continuing to fall as we conclude the third. Both teams putting up some points. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm assist to the game. Now, I know he's a big man, but he's got some point guard in him if he's making passes like this. Hey, that was a high-level pass no matter what position he came from. But it does make it stand out a little more when it's made by the big fella. Well, what a terrific game it's been so far. With this fourth quarter sure to bring more pressure-packed basketball. In the backcourt, it's Anthony and Suggs. Isaac and Wagner make up the forwards. And it's Ben Carroll in at the center position. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Magic. Achua passes to Ananobi. Achua with a screen. Ananobi on the take. And he jams it home with authority. They're going at it on offense. Neither team backing down. Hey, defense is taking a back burner. Secondary on the marquee, but who doesn't love a game like this? Let's go. I like offense. New York trailing. Here's Hart. Pass to Randall. It's stolen. Here's Suggs. Not an OB covering. Here's Wagner. That's basket number six in eight tries. And now we'll get a perspective here on how the hustle game has been going for the Magic. Their defensive intensity has served them well. It kept the offense scrambling and resulted in several steals. You know something else, guys? You know, they came out of that tunnel sprinting in a full stride sprint. That translated to the floor and lots of success in the fast break game. Back to Ben Carroll. Pass to Anthony. Kicks it out to Isaac. Just five to shoot. The Magic need to put one up here. Here's Suggs. The bank shot, no good. He expects to make every one of those, and we expect him to make them too. Boy, that foul looked intentional. Not exactly what you'd expect here. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't make sense, given the situation. Two minutes gone by here in the fourth. Here's Brunson outside. Oh, Brunson nails it from deep. And you can't forget to guard these corner spots or guys like Brunson will hurt you. Here's Anthony. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. Anthony's got 24 points. 
I think I've lost track of how many of their possessions have ended exactly like that. Yeah, that's not a bad way to end the possession, though, and it's the reason this game is coming down to the wire. I mean, his touch from outside and from the field in general has been superb. That free throw, no good. So neither attempt will fall that time for him. Orlando leading. And Suggs the bucket on the assist by Anthony. Great persistence that time from Suggs, not allowing that inside defense to bother him at all. Ananobi can't get it to go. The Magic have gotten four shots out of six attempts to drop so far in the fourth. He can't get that one to fall. Good work defensively by Randall. From behind the arc. And Ananobi gets the three. That's a clutch Ooh. shot by a big-time shooter. And where's the D? Orlando has gone four or five from outside the arc in this one. Anthony against Hart. Here's Wagner. It's rebounded by New York. 144 left to play in the fourth. Pass to Achua. And here's Randall. With the drive. Walk up two there. And now just a two-point magic lead. Home when it counts. Randall has that clutch DNA. And Carroll passes to Isaac. And Carroll outside. Back to Wagner. He's got it going on. Now seven for ten. As the game gets tight late and the stakes rise, you need guys who are willing and able to step up. Pass to Randall. And here are the Knicks now. Four-point game. Brunson up top, defended by Wagner. Count it! And he's brought them within two points now. And talk about stepping up in a big way. Well, that was one too. He wanted the ball. Nobody else was taking that shot. To the middle. Hello, Ben Carroll flushing it home. Ben Carroll showing and telling everybody he can handle the pressure. That's the way you go get it, young fella. And there's a pick. Brunson passes to Ananobi. And he buries it. And that one brings him within one. And their strategy is obvious. Manufacture looks from outside the arc. But, you know, that's exactly their plan here in the fourth. Work to find space behind the arc. And then bury some threes. Suggs adding another big play to his resume. Incredible. They can't afford to waste this shot. Moments like this are what it's all about. And it's Randall with the jam. Boy, this young kid is fun. Randall proven at the moment not too big for him. And they foul intentionally. Now they're going to have to do that again. They're not in the penalty just yet. Getting a little desperate at this stage. I mean, the clock's the big factor. That's a good foul, though. I like that. It was clock management crucial at this time of the game. He hits the first one, and that'll put him up two. And so both free throws good. And it's a three-point game. What composure at the line. Forcing your opponent to look for the three-pointer now. Pass to Ananobi. Count it! He just rises up and throws it down hard with one hand. That is such a go-to move for him. He holds nothing back on those. Does it as well as anybody, fellas. Tremendous skill while in the air. He gets the first, and that'll put him up two. Second one is good, getting both at the line. And it's a three-point game. Time called here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. They're losing by three. There's six seconds left in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? If they leave the arc open, take it. But it may be safer to get a quick two and then foul. Either way, they got to score the ball. And an intentional foul right there. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely a brain fade. I don't know where that came from. Just lost sense of time and the situation. This is what makes him special, his ability to come through in these spots. 
Yeah, no choice but to foul in that situation. Although, that's not the guy you want to send to the free throw line. But there was no time really to be selective. Stopping the clock was the priority. Now a timeout called by New York. They're down by three. Just four seconds left in the fourth. And so they foul intentionally. First free throw is good. And that brings him within two here. With as much as Brunson handles the ball, he's going to find himself at the line in these key situations. Now a timeout called by Orlando. They're leading by one. Just four seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Fires away from way outside.
Coming into this game focused on the front court matchup. A lot of talent in the low post here. And, you know, a lot of times that means it'll come down to the rebounding battle. Whoever controls the boards will have a big leg up in the physical and mental aspect of this game. Now the starting group for Orlando. The guard pair for them, Anthony and Suggs. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Bancaro in its center. And kudos to Suggs for just keeping his focus at the rim, making the D look helpless. And it's out of bounds. The Grizzlies are able to retain possession here. <laughs> Here's Morant. Bain with the screen on Isaac. Morant. Oh, oh my! Nice finish. Oh, wow. Okay, jaw turning it loose. Someone throw that man some water. No one near Suggs as he lets it go. Hands it from downtown. Suggs has got five now. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not who you want to leave open. Now here's Jackson. The three from Morant. That's good. And it's Jackson with the assist that time. The competitive fire of Morant matching the three on the other end. With the Grizzlies, Richard, we've heard about an emphasis on defense in the past few years. Yeah, and there has been some improvement. They were a middle-of-the-road type defensive team not too long ago. But the last few seasons, they have played impact defense. Isaac with the steal. Wagner on the wing, guarded by Morant. And now we've got the intentional foul. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. So first quarter, just over a minute and a half in. Anthony, the pass to Isaac. Now Suggs. He has five. Down to five on the shot clock. And finish off by Wagner. Oh, textbook pick and roll. Suggs is both explosive and creative. He'll be running this play for a long time to come. Now here's Morant. He's got seven. Into the lane. And he goes big with the dunk right over Jalen Suggs. And guys, that's not as easy as he made it look. You've got to have some skills to pull that off. Well, he's got plenty of those, yes. that's for sure. And that one's good, Wagner. And this is why Suggs was a top five pick. Jalen's got tremendous playmaking ability. Morant with it. Defended now by Wagner. Back to Morant. And he slams it down right on top of Jonathan Isaac. It puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, G.A. He really does put pressure on him. Yeah, hard to strategize for a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. Get up, Jalen Suggs. This guy also a terrific football player in high school. Morant against Isaac. And then Morant slams it in. Incredible reverse throwdown. Excellent body control. And guys, I'd even go as far to say that was a punctuation dunk. Good on the three-point shot. And if he's knocking down threes with consistency, Suggs almost impossible to check. And it's Morant missing. He missed that one, but I've seen him drill shots from that distance in warm-ups. Even though he is capable of hitting that shot, I'd like to see him work for a better look in that situation. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Easy possessions like that literally are just a gift. You just dream of them. He will gladly take those. to get him going early. That, that shot should give him some confidence. It makes a difference for them if he can establish his three-point shot as a weapon. Now, here's Suggs. Ten points for him. Oh, bigger than your average guard, Suggs can score all around the floor, including down low. Moran. Put it down! Oh, my gracious way to get up. 
That is not possible. What we just, <laughs> is that possible? Uh, I think it is, Greg. Not probable, but like possible, <laughs> like you said. And it goes down two points. And really good habits paying off for Suggs. He's finding shots and drumming up points for his squad. Morant passes to Jackson. Back to Morant. Isaac with the steal. And it'll be Orlando with their first time out of the game right here. Just two seconds between shot clock and game clock. To the paint. Here's Suggs. That's in there. Anthony with the assist. Anthony's got his fifth assist in this one. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Morant standing the floor. Jackson setting the pick here for Morant. One second left. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. Jalen Suggs has been leading the charge for the Orlando Magic. They kept going to him again and again. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And from what we've seen from Orlando, what do you guys see? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Credit the game plan coming in. They've identified some weaknesses, and they are exploiting them. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Jackson is out there with Jackson, and it's smart in at the three set. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. Morant reaches to Jackson. Morant against Isaac. And we have an intentional foul there, G.A. I uh, wish I could say why. <laughs> that one's pretty strange. I mean, no idea what got into his head right there. Morant kicks to Jackson. Nails it from the high post. And you see the unselfishness from Morant wanting to share that ball with any open teammate. Orlando leading by eight. It's hard to quantify how impactful Jaron Jackson Jr. is on D. He does so much. Yeah, the rim protection is elite. That's why he was Defensive Player of the Year, Greg. But he can also switch out on screens and not look lost. The sky is the limit for him defensively. Jackson finds Morant. In it goes for the eighth time in 10 tries. Shows great imagination offensively. Morant, so many tricks up his sleeve. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. Driving the lane. Outside, Bain. Morant sets a screen for Bain. Wants to get it to Morant and does. It's been all about Ja tonight. Can score in so many different ways. To the middle here's Isaac and Isaac throws it down and I've been impressed with the unselfishness but also getting guys the ball where they can do something with it his court vision has been on display in this one he's doing a tremendous job just orchestrating the offense beautiful definitely a situation you want to make sure you don't give him too good of a look out to Anthony over in the corner Isaac Back to Anthony. Now the pass to Ben Carroll. Wagner a screen on Jackson. Yes, that goes in. And now it's an eight-point magic lead. And you can tell Ben Carroll trusts his guys. He knows they'll help him find a good look. Jackson setting the pick here for Morant. It's all in time by the Magic. You often expect him to convert these types of shots, but the D must have made their presence felt to prevent that one. Now a timeout called by Orlando. And with the big collisions we see in the paint, and Greg, there are some, some have argued for changing the charge rule. Did you see that? You know, there's talk of extending the restricted area. I've even heard some say ban charges by help defenders. I like the former idea. That seems less extreme. Oh, taking it to the rack with power. Hammering down the two-hand slam. 
right, and the latest now from our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Now, defense wins championships, but offense is winning over the league with efficiency reaching new heights year by year. Now, different explanations exist, but one thing is clear. In an era of floor spacing, there are elite players, a lot of them, who are having a field day exploiting all that room to operate. Kevin? Boy, they sure are, David. Well put. Thank you. Derek Rose has checked in for the Grizzlies. Bane with it, picked up by Bancaro. Here's Jackson, and the dunk by Jackson. We talk about Jackson's elite shooting for a big, but this is the other thing that he can do when his mindset is to attack. And Carroll passes to Suggs. And finished off by Van Carroll. Feed the interior. Good things will happen. The Grizzlies trail by 10. Payne for three. And it's Wagner with the rebound. Not quite enough defense. That time around, just lucky he was off. Now a timeout called by Orlando. Orlando making some changes. Gary Harris comes in for Jonathan Isaac. And Blacks subbed in for Jalen Suggs. And so it's Harris who will bring it up for the Orlando Magic. Ten-point lead. This is their biggest. A nice shot by Black. And this offense is in a perfect rhythm and you can see how they're finishing their plays right about that seems like they haven't missed now here's Bain defense right on him and there's Jackson on the assist by Bain and that's now six points for Jaron Jackson magic leading by 10 here's Black Whistle blows, bucket is good, and he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. When you allow good scores to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. That's a great possession. Put your best players in a position to succeed. We've got 33 seconds left here in the second. Passes it to Jackson. The timely screen gave him a step, and he took it all the way. And you can see the strength that Jackson has added to that huge frame. He is turning into a monster. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the game here. Anthony with it. Guarded now by Jackson. And again, it's Orlando with a three. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flames. Always plays hard until the final whistle, no matter what the situation is. Rose kicks to Jackson. Now here's Rose. Oh, and the jam by Rose. Well, how about the heart on display here tonight from Rose? Just flawless in his attack at the rim. Boy, it's tough to match his goals. Now a timeout called by Orlando. There's Wagner with the three. No good. And so it's Orlando enjoying a 12-point lead as they talk things over during the break. And their ability to get points in the paint has made all the difference in this one. Right back after this break. scoreboard the second half begins with very different goals for these teams one side trying to mount a comeback one side trying to protect their lead guys John Morant has been sensational no problems fighting his way to the rim in this one a lot of points in close and you love that mindset he has going at the rim he hasn't settled for anything and he's been the aggressor all game long checking out the group for Jamal Mosley to start the second half the guard pair for them, Anthony and Suggs. Isaac in the front court along with Bodner. And it's Van Caro in at the five. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, but not exactly logical. How about 
pointless to foul there. I mean, I, I don't know where his head is, but it's not in the game. Just a heads-up play by Smart, pushing the ball ahead. He knows not to hold that ball when someone has a good look ahead. Going inside, and Suggs throws it down. Just rubbing it in their faces with that dunk. <laughs> he is never going to take his foot off the pedal. And that finish shows you how dangerous he can be as a passer and a finisher. Here's Morant. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. That's on Jonathan Isaac. Tough move by Morant, taking the shot and absorbing the foul. Two shots. No good on the free throw. Good on the second free throw. Here's Suggs. 18 points for him. Wagner outside. And he makes that one. That's seven points for Franz Wagner. A nice read by Suggs. He sees the floor opening up and puts the ball right in the shooter's hand. And Moran throws it down. That should give him a nice little jolt. Uh, yeah, it has to. They need a jolt GM. And they need more where that came from. They're not out of this hole yet. Here's Wagner. Flanketed by the D. He fights to the rim for the layup. Wagner's got nine. Guy's just ridiculous. He's just an absolute surgeon when he has the ball. This man is surgical. There is no way to slow him down when he wants to score. Here's Moreau. Oh, yes! That first step of Ja. He's one of the few guys that's not only quick, but fast. And this man is lightning fast. Over in the corner, Van Carroll. Cross contact on the shot. And, and now, yep, this will be a coach's challenge. We thought that might happen. Triggering a review of the personal foul. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast. The previous play is under review. Wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively, and involving the coaches by being able now to challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping. After review, the ruling on the floor stands. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. Two minutes gone in this third quarter now. Morant against Isaac. And it's sent back by Isaac. Oh, how about the read from the young fella? Isaac is dependable at anticipating when to go for the block. Wagner kicks to Isaac. Drives to the hoop. And Isaac throws it down. Oh, he just punches that one down with a fury. He rubs it in a little deeper with the hanging finish. Here's Moran. Oh, Wow. Oh, he's got some hops. Morant, this man loves to attack the rim whenever he gets the chance. And when I mean any chance, I mean any chance. Lost to Wagner. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. A quality pass setting up a quality shot. It's just textbook basketball. Morant tries it in. And he slams it down right on top of Jonathan Isaac. I don't know, but it seems like Morant's got springs or something in his shoes. Pass to Isaac. Wagner outside. Back to Isaac. Now, here's Sun. Guarded by Bain. Two on the clock. And that one is good from Suggs. Suggs has got 20 points. Oh, strong move by Suggs inside, not allowing the contact to hold him back. Isaac against Morant. Here's Jackson. Back to Morant. Jackson, a screen on Isaac. Morant. And Morant throws it down. 
so creative with the ball in his hands. Morant is adept at creating offenses for himself. An intentional foul committed, but for time what out, purpose, out. Greg? I'm not sure. A, a scene of confusion right there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. Now a timeout called by Memphis. Rose is checked in for Morant. Now into the lineup for your Grizzlies. 59 seconds left in the third quarter. Ben Carroll is screen on Bain. Ben Carroll passes to Wagner. Back to Ben Carroll. And finished off by Ben Carroll. Oh, big time dunk by Ben Carroll. I like seeing the aggressive side of this young man. Jackson setting the pick here for Bain. Jackson finds Bain. Back to Jackson. And Jackson throws it down hard. Just muscling it home from there. Jackson is no stranger to having to work over strong defense. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Let's turn up the noise and give a big welcome to your Some changes for Memphis. Art comes in for Jaron Jackson. And it's Williams in for Jackson. Then for the Magic. Houston's checked in, and Harris subbed in for Isaac. Five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Now, here's Suggs, guarded by Bain. Houston's shot is off. Bain looking around. To the inside, just three on the clock. Yep, it goes, and the Magic lead is kept down to 11 on the bucket from Williams. And, and that's the kind of lead time pass we've come to expect from him. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Here's Anthony. And the last second attempt doesn't fall. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may. Here now a chance to show you our assist of the game. And it's presented, as always, by State Farm. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them. And what a beautiful feed. Serving it up on a platter, that is a beautiful dish. And two teammates on the same page. And there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. A moment now to hear from our sideline reporter, Hall of Famer, David Alder. David. Hey, guys. I caught Taylor Jenkins' message to his team. His emphasis was for more effort on the defensive end. He said, we have to do a better job of communicating and helping each other out. They're getting too many easy looks. Let's make it hard on them. Well, then they're going to have to if they're going to slow down the hot shooting of their opponent. Thank you, David. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Jaron Jackson is out there with Jackson, and it's Smart in at the three. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. They blow the whistle, and here we go. Coach's challenge happening right now. This one in regards to the personal foul, seeing if that was the right call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, Personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast. Wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able now. The challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping for. The ruling on the floor stands. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. The explosiveness of Moran is just incredible. His motor and work ethic are both tremendous as well. Now, here's Suggs, guarded by Bain. Not surprised at all. He's shooting it well and scoring points in bunches. And it's Jonathan Isaac with the foul. That's it for him. He's fouled out of the game. And he has to take that long, 
slow walk back to the bench here. He'll watch the rest of this one from the sideline. Here's a check in for Jonathan Isaac. Jackson in the corner. Good and a nice assist from Morant. That's just unfair. 6'11. And just sinking threes. I guess this is the new NBA. Now, here's Suggs. Defense is right there. Wagner against Jackson. Harris outside. Four on the clock. Here's Suggs. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. The Grizzlies trail by eight. Morant with it. Picked up by Suggs. It's Morant with the clock. That should give him a nice little jolt. Uh, yeah, it has to. They need a jolt here. And they need more where that came from. They're not out of this hole yet. Dan Carroll with the screen. Suggs. And the rejection by Jackson. They push it up, four on three. Two points, that one goes. The adjustments they've made offensively, they're putting guys in a position now to succeed. But it took them a little while to get there. Just goes to show as long as you persevere, you'll figure your way out. You love how each side has risen to the challenge throughout this one. Man, this has been a fun one, but look, who doesn't love a high-scoring game? And this is where Morant really shines. The bigger the moment, the more he wants to capitalize. Now, here's Shuck. Guarded by Bain. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And you know, Jalen Suggs has had to deal with some huge expectations, but he's got a great attitude and always works hard to live up to. He makes one of two that time, and so it's Jackson who brings it up for the Memphis Grizzlies, trailing by five. He just didn't like what he saw inside, so he takes the open transition three. But if he missed, Coach might have had some words for him. Here's Suggs, and it's good. Looking quite sharp with 10 of 12 shooting tonight. And no question, Suggs has proven that he is a big shot maker already for the moment. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jalen Suggs. That's his first foul. And here are the Grizzlies now. Here's Morant. Oh, my goodness, the slam. Talk about putting some extra on it. That dunk was way over the top. Close game or not, he's going to finish firm when he gets the space. Now, here's Shaw. T right on him. This is to Anthony. Just five on the clock. Here's Ben Kim. That one falls coming off Anthony's feet. And Carroll's got four points now in the quarter. He better get used to these late game scenarios. Ben Carroll getting a nice taste of it right there. Got a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The scoring breakdown for the Magic. They've been hitting consistently from mid-range all game. It's been a big part of their offensive production in this one. And all game long, they, they work the ball inside. It's really worked well for them offensively. If he hits all of those, they're feeling a lot more comfortable. But now, still a one-possession game. Jackson dishes to Morant. It counts! And what a sensational bucket to bring them within one. And you can't get a bigger bucket than that. What a huge play coming through when it matters most. Suggs, it falls! And the body control from Suggs just brushing off tight coverage and keeping the focus on the task at hand. Morant gets to Smart. Morant outside. It drops. And that shot brings them to within just one. 
That is just absolutely ridiculous. Look, we talk about Morant having that hit factor, and then he makes the biggest play of the night. It's nine seconds separate the shot clock in. And they do have a foul to give. Memphis with the ball. And it's all about the three right here. We'll see what they draw up. Three-pointer is a must. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. From the free throw line, John Morant is good, but I think he wants to be great. A tight game. He is exactly who he wanted at the line. And they foul intentionally. They're going to have to do that now again and again. They're not in the penalty yet. That's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. 17 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And that's an intentional foul. It's the first. That will put them up by two. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a three-point game. The last make was huge. Now, realistically, the worst-case scenario for them is OT. Now a timeout called by Memphis. They're behind by three. 16 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Here's what's your take. And if you can get a three, shoot it. Otherwise, get the quick two and a foul. Yeah, time is the enemy at this point. So I think I'd go for the tie and avoid playing the foul game. Wagner with it.
A lot of star power at the guard positions on both sides. And you know, traditionally, B.A., when big guys match up, it's all about the power. But this contest is about finesse. Who can outplay and outsmart the competition? And the starting lineup for the Grizzlies. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Then it's Jaron Jackson. Then there's Marcus Smart. And it's Williams in at the four. Yeah, attack mode from the start. Exactly what you want coming into this game. Get your better scores, some easy looks, so they can start to establish themselves. And setting the tempo with an assertive move. Like, where was the defense on that play? No excuse. You have to be aware. He should be on your radar all the time. Now here's Leonard. Tice passes to Tucker. No good with the triple. And here's Memphis. Not sure why he committed the intentional foul. No purpose. I think everyone's a little confused. But weird plays happen. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Leonard against Moran. And then Moran with the dunk. As soon as Ja lifts off, you know you're in for a treat. He can simply levitate in the air. It had been a long time since Murray State had produced an NBA star. John Morant changed that narrative. B.A., he certainly did. He's now the highest average scorer in the NBA out of Murray State. This dude is an animal, a walking bucket, if you will. Talented, driven. He puts constant pressure on your defense. Morant looking around. And the three off target. And yeah, that old adage about being too wide open, not a thing. He just missed it. Tucker, the pass to Tice. George against Moran. Six to shoot. Here's George. Gets his second attempt to go. Now he's one for two. It's almost too easy for Paul George inside. He gets right in close and converts. Leonard against Moran. And he can't get that one. Harden with the defensive effort. For Los Angeles, they've gone three of five here in the opening quarter. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Pass to Leonard. The crossover. And the dunk by Leonard. Look at the handles by Kawhi Leonard. He has worked on that part of his game. He has his defender on skates. Here's Moran. And the bucket counts. And he is on his way to the line. He'll try to make it a three-point play. And a look at how the offensive approach has been going so far for the Clippers. Establishing a pink presence early in the game, it really helps and pays big dividends down the line because it frees up your perimeter. And following off of what you said, they've really done a good job distributing the ball, passing up good shots for great ones. First two. Leonard for three. Knocks down the triple. Leonard's got seven points in the game. No doubt in my mind that Kawhi Leonard shoots with the utmost confidence. Jackson the screen. Moran the pass to Jackson. Good. And the setup by Moran. Nothing went right on that offensive possession except the result. And the Clippers with the ball. Leonard looking around. Harden the pass to Leonard. Ooh, and Leonard throws it down. And remember, James Harden is usually a front runner in the league in assists. He has great vision. The 2023 postseason didn't go as the Grizzlies had envisioned it, Smitty. Yeah, a first round departure. B.A., I think inexperience and overconfidence got the better of them. A veteran Lakers team was able to put them away. Something Paul George has a ton of is talent. The way he moves, the way he reads the floor, he's got a sixth sense for this game. And so it's Leonard who brings up the ball for the L.A. Clippers. Leading by five. Harden against Moran. Outside Harden. The basket drops, and they want a second opinion on that call. The signal for the coach's challenge has been made. 
second personal third team foul. People were worried that this would slow the action down. But with so many close calls in every game, the NBA was smart to adopt. The previous play is under review. This does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back them up and make the refs take another look. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. The Grizzlies have gone four of seven, shooting a solid percentage. Williams a screen on Leonard, and it's Moran on the drive. And then Morant with the dunk! Off the dribble, Morant is so dynamic. Even his teammates look a little stunned. Harden against Moran. And the Clippers hit again from deep. He's consistent from out there, especially when you give him that kind of room. Outside Moran. Oh, solid D from Leonard. I mean, you won't see this too often. Getting denied at the rim. He's likely to remember that one. 26 seconds left to play in the first quarter. George outside. There's the three. And the Clippers hit again from deep. They played with fantastic energy from the opening tip. Already ahead by double digits. Trying to run away and not look back. Here's Moran. With the slam! Stop it, Ja. He's putting on a show. Eight seconds left in the first quarter. Here's Harden. Banked it in off the glass. Harden's got seven points in the game. They're not wasting any time putting their stamp on this game. Time out, what time a start. Out. Play calling has been fantastic. Start. They've been a step ahead of the defense since the opening tip. Time out call. Memphis. That'll count. No good. Misses at the buzzer. And so it's Kawhi Leonard making highlights for Los Angeles. Hunting for opportunities, leading to nine points in the quarter. We'll be right back after this word. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. Boy, quite a position here for the Clippers to be in. What do you guys think? Oh, what a first quarter. You love their willingness to make the extra pass. And that's really hard on a defense, having to play deeper into the clock and having to cover a lot more ground. So on the floor for Memphis to kick off the second quarter. We've got Marcus Smart. Desmond Bain is out there with Luke Kennard. Then it's Jackson, and it's Williams in at the power forward position. And now they decide to foul intentionally. Ja Moran, he's checked in for Memphis. For three, George. And the Clippers hit again from deep. Smitty, in terms of building a title team, is the era of super teams over, you think? B.A., no way. Despite what happened with KD Harden and Kyrie in Brooklyn, Front offices will always look to align stars. I think you just need the right personalities. Now here's Moran. He's got 11. Five on the clock. Moran elevates at the rim. Tough to miss that man. Desmond Bain read the defense perfectly. And it's Harden penetrating. Counted. Good. Harden's got nine. And it gets even worse for them. I mean, he just waltzes down the lane, extending their advantage. Huh, not good. A uncontested shot. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, what a play. 
man, oh man, one of the more advanced ball handlers we've ever seen at his age. John Morant able to create scoring opportunities for himself. It's George on the wing, defended by Smart. Pass to Leonard. Kawhi, too strong inside. A bruising bucket down low. Kawhi's not going to flinch because of a little contact. And Kawhi Leonard gets a whistle that time. That's his first foul of the game. First team foul. Pass to Smart. Back to Payne. And a strong finish with two hands. Desmond Bain using that power to throw it down. Here's George. Oh, and Jackson with the block. And they're pushing it up. He goes up. Here's Bain. Oh, a clear foul there on the missed shot. So he'll get a pair at the line. It's going to go on Paul George. I like that. I mean, some physical play inside. He's not about to give up any easy baskets. Well, Steve, how about the offensive growth of Desmond Bain season to season? B.A., he's getting more assertive out there. Bain, he hunts shots and he takes shots, which is allowing him to increase his offensive impact. And the Clippers making a change here. Westbrook's checked in. All right, let's check in with Allie LaForce. Brian, a few years back, Marcus Smart was talking about how he'd love to follow in Hall of Famer Gary Payton's footsteps as the next guard to win Defensive Player of the Year. He spoke it into existence last year, winning that coveted award. But guys, you watch him play. His actions on the court speak louder than words. No doubt about that, Allie. Thanks. Good stuff there. And the basket by Bain. A stellar shooter from downtown. All Bain needs is a little space, and he's ready to fire. Tucker finds George. Tice, a screen on Smart. And he lobs it up, and finished off by Tice. And the lead increases on a crazy offensive sequence. Man, the dunk alone would have been incredible, let alone the fact that it came off a pinpoint pass. Jackson with a screen on Leonard. Morant. Oh, there's Morant with the slam. I love how tenacious John Morant is. When he sees a lane open up, he attacks. Leonard passes to Westbrook. One thirty-six left in the first half. Six on the shot clock. Leonard with a screen on Smart. Here's George. Williams grabs the board. Wow, that's one you just kind of assume is going in. Tough luck. Jackson with a screen on Westbrook. Pass to Jackson. Offline with a three. Uncontested look. Can't fault the shot selection. He's money from there. Tucker with a screen. Bain against Leonard. Westbrook outside. The Clippers got a hurry. Late clock here. And he's headed to the line for two. He gets the whistle there. I like this from PG. Attacking inside. Helps set up his perimeter game. The first free throw is good. Man, he's checked in for Kawhi Leonard. The Grizzlies also with a sub. Derrick Rose, he's checked in for Moran. And you'd like to go two for one here, Grant. And at the same time, you want to get a good shot here, B.A. Bain, the pass to Jackson. Outside Bain. Got a piece of it. Shot clock and game clock separated by less than six seconds. Tice, a screen on Bain. George passes to Tice. Second chance shot. Time, time, out, time called out. here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. Started.
Williams here. Westbrook right side. Just five on the clock. Tucker with a screen on Smart. Back to Harden. And again, it's the Clippers missing. The clock runs out, and we are headed to halftime. The Clippers on top, up by seven. Well, now we have some time to check in with Allie LaForce. Allie. I'm joined by Clippers head coach Ty Lue and coach when Kawhi Leonard. All right, good stuff, Allie. And we'll get back to the action at the start of the third quarter. And we played through the first half. Plenty of basketball left in this one. Oh, a fantastic game from Ja Moran in this one. The numbers say it all. He spent the first half playing efficient ball. And it's not like everything's been at the rim. There's been a number of jump shots along the way. They've got Daniel Tice. P.J. Tucker is out there with Terrence Mann. Then it's James Harden, and it's Westbrook in at the two. That's the group starting the second half for Ty Lue. Here's Harden. And Harden with the slam. If given the space, Harden's not afraid to take it to the rim. And Rose has got the ball here for Memphis. Seven-point differential. Up top, Jackson. Out to Rose. Back to Jackson. Pulls up. And James Harden pulls it down. It's a shot you would think he would make, but he just doesn't make it all the time. Tice outside. Harden scanning the floor. Pass to Westbrook. Drives to the hoop. And that one drops for him. And now it's a nine-point Los Angeles lead. Woo! On a drive, Westbrook turns on the Jets and flies past the defenders. Down low. And Williams gets the bucket on the assist from Rose. This is who you want leading that play. A sure passer with great awareness. Third quarter of play with just over one and a half minutes gone by. And here's Westbrook. Tice is screen on Payne. To the inside. Oh, it's blocked by Jackson. Whether it's on the ball or off. Jaron Jackson has shown great awareness and timing as a shot blocker. Unselfish, moving the ball. Love to see this kind of offense. Pass to Tucker. And stolen by Williams. Smart on the drive. He's off on the layup. The Clippers in the lead. Tucker, the pass to Westbrook. Tucker inside. Guarded by Rose. And Tucker gets it to go. Tucker's got his first points in this one. Determined to score. P.J. won't be distracted by contact. Here's Rose. Oh, a special move before that shot. That's nice work. Stopping short of the rim. Just laying it over the top. Now a timeout called by the Clippers. And the Clippers, Leonard's checked in for man. And it's Paul George in for Russell Westbrook. Jack Jackson, he's checked in for Memphis. Los Angeles has gone four or five from outside the arc in this one. Harden against Smart. Harden, the pass to George. Back to Harden. There's the drive, and then Harden with the jam. Love what Paul George is doing right there, spotting those wide open guys. Pass to Bain. Two minutes remaining. Up top, Jackson. Back to Bain. Jackson with a screen on George. Nails it from beyond the arc. Bain's got 10 points in the game. Defensively, you have to tighten up on him or suffer the consequences. Now Harden. 
Tucker with a screen. Outside Harden. Clock at six. Tice is screen on Rose. Three-pointer, Harden. And it's Bain with the rebound. For Memphis, they've gotten five of seven attempts in the third quarter. And Jackson, here we go. And the dunk by Jackson. They've been aggressive during this run, but they've also played under control. And it has them in a great spot to take the lead. They love to get a few stops now at the other end. Time called here. The Clippers decide to talk it over. The Clippers make it a switch here. Westbrook's checked in. The Grizzlies also with a sub. Morant's checked in. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not sure why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. And the Grizzlies making a change here. Williams is checked in. Here's Westbrook. Soft touch off the glass. Westbrook's gotten four this quarter. Westbrook takes these challenges personally. He loves scoring on aggressive defense. Jackson down low. He's against Tice. Jackson can't get it to go. Westbrook with it. Picked up by Rose. Here's Tucker. And the three-pointer goes. And it's a six-point Los Angeles lead. Offensively, Tucker's role is a spot-up jump shooter. All right, now a timeout called by Memphis. And so Moran will bring it up for the Grizzlies. There's 39 seconds left in the third quarter. Morant on his way. And then Morant with the dunk. Don't look now. John Morant is on one. Feels like everything is falling. Leonard with a screen on Morant. Westbrook, the pass to Tucker. Leonard outside. Shot clock at five. Tucker with a screen on Williams. Leonard attacking. Leonard with a full head of steam. A beast on the dribble drive. You see Kawhi right there, undeterred by contact. Left side, Moran. Jackson for three. And again, it's the Grizzlies from deep. Time, time called out, here. Out. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. Let's give Harden. Coach credit. He's trying to find a way to squeeze the most out of every possession. Critical part of the game. You have to be flexible. You have to be able to adjust what you're doing. Got it off in time. That misses. Would have counted had it gone. And the game still closely contested as we end the third quarter. The Clippers on top, up by three. After a quick break, we're coming right back with the start of the fourth quarter. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assist of the game. This is the definition of team chemistry. I love to see this kind of communication and connection between teammates leading to the perfect pass. Fundamental basketball. Keep your eyes up, keep the ball moving. And they're not happy with the call here. Coach has given the signal. He's going to use his challenge. Probably a good idea in such a close contest. First team foul. People were worried that this would slow the action down. But with so many close calls in every game, the NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. He's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back them up and make the refs take another look. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. And from the sideline, let's catch up with Allie. I was able to listen in on what Taylor Jenkins had to say to his team. He told the guys to stay after it inside. He said, our play inside is terrific right now. He said, don't lose any of that intensity. Stay strong down there. 
It's always nice to hear a coach enjoying his team's play. Back to you. And Allie, thank you for that. And Kawhi Leonard gets a whistle that time. That'll be a second foul of the game. Leonard against Moran. From downtown. Ooh, that's good. Moran from way out. Well, Moran's awareness in the pick and roll is special. He usually makes the right reads. Tice sets a screen. Harden against Moran. Leonard with a screen on Moran. Five on the clock. Here's Harden. Missed inside. Woo, blown opportunity right there. Won't get many chances easier than that one. On the wing, Bain. Jackson outside. Pass to Moran. And for some reason, he decided to foul there. Yeah, B.A., that's an odd move. Maybe there's something else behind it. 60 ticks off the clock here in the fourth. The great decision from Smart. He's all about doing what's best for the team. Los Angeles has got five of seven threes to drop here tonight. Harden against Moran. Now here's Harden. He's closely guarded. That's a miss. And he's seven for 11 from the floor. Right now, firing on all cylinders. Yeah, there's a nice flow to this offense right now. Jackson outside to take the lead. Good. And the setup by Moran. Morant's got his fourth assist in this one. Not only is Jaren a viable option from three, he's a primary threat from there. That's how good of a shooter he is. Harden with it. Jackson in his pocket. There's Tice with a three. Counted from distance. And the Clippers lead by one. And both teams running long-range plays that are working. How often do we see this these days? Clubs answering each other from range. And in a game this close, they're going to challenge the call. Coach does not agree with it, and he wants them to take another look at the monitor. Tough cover. Jaren can beat you inside and out. Jackson <laughs> of these personal foul calls still disputed even after the video review. There's no doubt there's going to be a gray area in a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure. After review, the ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. And that one falls for Jackson. Jaron Jackson, I think about his mobility on the defensive end. He can dart out to the perimeter shooters and recover to the paint better than most guys his size. Because he knows he makes a living at the line, he invites contact and sometimes even initiates it. Harden against Jackson. Tice passes to George. Back to Tice. Yes, and it's George picking up the assist. George has got his fourth assist in this one. Neither team able to build a lead and sustain it. After six lead changes, it feels like it could come down to one big play. Bain, the pass to Moran. Let's go with a three. The three-pointer is down, Ja Morant. You know that he's always going to find a way to get the ball in tight situations like that and knock it down. Here's Harden. And Harden with the slam. Oh, can you say important bucket by Harden? James always wants the ball in these moments. Love it. Jackson with a screen on Leonard. Here's Moran. Moran with the sweet touch. Calling for the ball in crucial moments. Morant steps up when it matters most. The drive by Harden. And then Harden with the jam. Woo-wee! What a big finish out of the backcourt. That might be exactly what they needed at this point of the game. It's a tight contest. Those type of plays can fire up your team and swing momentum. Morant with a screen on Tucker. 
Here's Williams. And Williams punches it home. Hey, when in doubt, run the defender off the screen. And you know, with a result like that, we'll see them run it again. Especially if the defense is going to allow you to do it. Have to switch on that play. George is screen on Moran. Hard misses. Memphis has gone three for three from downtown in this fourth quarter. Here's Moran. Oh, there's Moran with the slam. This is why he has the ball. John Morant, he loves to deliver in these moments. And Marcus Smart picks up the foul. That's his third foul so far. Second team foul. Outside Harden. Tucker, the pass to Harden. Back to Tucker. George scanning the floor. Tucker with a screen on Moran. Just four to shoot. George finds Leonard. Yes! Oh, what a sensational bucket! That brings him within one. And it's Moran with the ball for the Grizzlies. And I think we'll see him milk the clock a bit. Yeah, seems like the heady move right now. Count it! Whoa, whoa, that is as clutch as it gets. Big time play. This is why we all watch. The NBA is about these moments. Harden against Moran. Tucker, the pass to Harden. And they go to the intentional foul. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. He drops the first one, and that brings it within two here. And this is who you want at the line in a close ball game. James Harden. You see why he's one of the guys they want at the line in these situations. And the Grizzlies call time here. They're ahead by one. Nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. Substitution on the court. Nine seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. And they commit an intentional foul. We'll see another one of those, so they get into the penalty. Yeah, just trying to keep this game alive. Not a bad foul right there. And so it's...
the center matchup, Greg, in this one, these two bigs bring so much to their respective teams. Yeah, and, and remember when people thought centers were going extinct? Look around the league. There, there's so much talent at that position, including the two guys we get to watch here tonight. Look at the 76ers starting group. Melton is in at shooting guard. Harris is the small forward. Robert Covington out there with Joel Embiid. And it's Maxi in at the point guard. Now, here is Harden. The pass to Leonard. Embiid with the steal. Awesome defense. Just outstanding effort to reach his big hands in there and just rip the ball away. And it's Leonard with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. Some nice ball movement by the Clippers. Leonard sets a screen for Harden. Three-pointer, and it's Leonard. That time on the assist by Harden. Always a threat from range. You give Kawhi those looks. That's at your own risk. And taking a look at the L.A. Clippers, Brent, a team that just keeps coming up short, unfortunately. Well, the Clippers have definitely been more competitive lately, and it's kind of like phase two for them with this group. They still haven't been able to get over the hump. And they have some work to do. Wasting zero time. That's why Leonard knew what he wanted to do. Maxi looking it over. Embiid the pass to Maxi. Milton with the ball. Driving to the basket. Yeah, just solid work on the back end of that play. Yep, you're right. Finish hard with two hands on that stuff. And George kicks it to Tucker. He dishes it to Hart. Tucker is screen. Harden finds George. Shot clock at six. The Clippers need to get off a shot. Tucker the pass to George. Out of bounds. It'll be 76ers ball. 76ers ball. We're just about two minutes into the first quarter. George against Maxi. Pass to Embiid. Lays it up and banks it in. Looming large on the interior. Embiid, hard to deny. And George, here we go. Score the basket. Nice shot after missing his first attempt. Uncovered at the rim, finding cracks in the defense here early on. Just really smart basketball and exploiting whatever holes that he's seeing right now in the defensive squad. And they go to the intentional foul. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. Second team foul. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Harden against Melton. Harden dishes to Leonard. He kicks to George. Five to shoot. He's looking for Leonard and finds him. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. What a powerhouse move from Kawhi getting right to the rim. A two-time finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard. Brent, he's shown he can dominate at the highest of levels. And when he dominates, he dominates every facet of the game. At his peak, Kawhi is one of the most impactful players this game has ever seen. And here's Leonard. Following the three-pointer by Tyrese Maxey. And George kicks to Leonard. Harden against Melton. It's Harden with the drive. Leonard the pass to Harden. To the wing on the left. Here's the three. Now on the scoring column with that bucket. One for two this game. Tucker, great job reading the floor and finding a way to set up a ready shooter. Basket counts. Maxie's got five. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivering. Well, he's going to just keep going now. That's early confidence for him. Love seeing a point guard who can explode to the rim like that. Oh, great attitude and even a better finish. Well, just seeking out weaknesses in the defense and then exploiting it. Here's Maxson. The Clippers get in the bucket. Covington. And the dunk by Covington. 
Those feel so good. Covington up there for a slam dunk. Harden scanning the floor. Now, here's Tucker, guarded by Harris. And Robert Covington picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And the 76ers making a change here. Powery's checked in. Here's George. Number seven, And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by George. The 76ers trail. Outside Lowry. The three. Another three for Philadelphia. And throughout his career, Lowry has been a threat from that area. And the Clippers decide to take their first time out here. And coach is looking to seize every advantage, maximize every possession. Got to feel good as a coach if you make all those adjustments. Pull the right strings. That's what they love to do. The three from Harden. And no good on the last second attempt this time. Plenty of offense in this closely contested first quarter of play. And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out in the second quarter. And a chance for just a second now to check out the scoring breakdown for Philadelphia. Tons of points off penetration so far, guys. They're driving at will on the defense, just taking whatever they want. Getting to the inside is really important, but it's how close you can get to the basket. It feels like these guys are all around the rim in their attack tonight. Harden out there with Paul George. Then there's Kawhi Leonard. Then it's P.J. Tucker, and it's Mann in at the small forward. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. Milton passes to Embiid. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. Leonard's got his fifth rebound in this one. Pass to George. There's the triple. That one dropped for his second bucket. Mark him two for four. And we'll see if they can finally hold on to a lead. It's been back and forth all night. Well, you can tell they really want to increase this lead. They can't keep letting them take it from him. Now George following the miss by Kyle Lowry from deep. And Anthony Melton picks up the foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. Maxie's checked in for Kyle Lowry. GA, we've seen it over the last couple of years. The center position has come back into vogue. And Kevin, we were seeing teams go small. Lots of fours. Even traditional threes play the five. But with MVP level seasons from guys like Jokic and Embiid, the center isn't quite extinct yet. Now here's Embiid. And here comes Harden, leading the fast break. Good work there as it goes. Harden's got the lead up to three now for Los Angeles. And <laughs> no one hits a pull-up like the beard. I mean, he's perfected the quick stop and pop. And that thing is a deadly shot. Stolen by George. We're closing in on two minutes played here in the second quarter. Tucker bounce pass. Harden against Melton. Chalk up two there. Harden's got nine. And for Harden, finishing through contact is just part of the job description. He gets bodied up almost every time he takes it inside. Personal foul. First team foul. Here's Maxi. He has five. Down low, there's Embiid. Embiid bulldozing inside. And Embiid doesn't mind physical defense. In fact, he embraces attacking it. Covington against George. The dish to Leonard. Pass to Mann. Back to Leonard. Six to shoot. 
Takes it inside. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. Kawhi playing at his own pace. He can really control the game off the bounce. And the 76ers call time here. Zubac is checked in for Los Angeles. And the 76ers also making a change. Reed's checked in. And so it's Maxi who brings up the ball for the 76ers. Trailing by five. There's the drive. That's good, and he's now three for four from the field. And that's an example of playing big, adapting to the situation. Tip of the cap there. I mean, that defense was good. The finish was better. And George, here we go. A PG showing that. That's a signature dunk from him. The 76ers trail by five. One thing you marvel at, the consistency of Paul George. Year in and year out. I wonder when Paul George Gray goes into the offseason, if it's more tinkering and sharpening all those skills, or if he's trying to add something. Because I don't know how you add anything to how versatile a player he is. And here are the Clippers now. After the miss from Tyrese Maxey. Here's Harden. And the jam by Harden. All the way up. The beard. Boy, those were two loud points. Maxey against George. Out to Harris. The three. That one's in. His first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Such a critical part of how their offense is going to flow. Things are only working when he seems to be on the floor. And it's George finishing it off. How about the handles of a guy like Paul George at his size being able to rip around and has total confidence in his ability to score. In the corner, Reed with it. Another three for Philadelphia. Three and not where he earns his money, that three-point shot, but he's a good shooter from that range if he's got space. Covington with it. Maxi in the corner. For three. Got a piece of it. The pass to Melton. Covington kicks to Maxi. Covington setting the pick for Maxi. Tries yet again. Yep, it goes. And the Clipper lead is cut down to just one on the bucket from Covington. Good to see Covington get in there and challenge the defense. And the Clippers call time here. Kawhi Leonard is checked in for Zubox, and Russell Westbrook is subbed in for George. And the 76ers will go for a different look here. Joel Embiid is checked in for Paul Reed. Martin comes in for Robert Covington. Oubre is checked in for Milton. And it's Kyle Lowry in for Maxi. Now here's Tucker. Hasn't made one yet. Pocket four. That one misses. Great D that time from Oubre. Here's Harris. Count it good. And the 76ers lead by one. Tobias carved out a bit of space, owned that real estate, and a time nice time aggressive out. finish. Los Angeles calls timeout. And doesn't like how things are going right now. The timeout before the timeout here, maybe just to cut off the momentum and have a chit chat with the team to settle down. The three from Harden. Oh, and he just knocked down the buzzer, Peter! What a way to end the half there, guys. Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. And in that first half, we saw a pretty tight battle. We'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during the half. An exceptional performance so far from James Harden. 
And guys, we saw just how tough he can be with the step to the rim. Great job of just attacking that first half. Yeah, nice job of carving his way to the inside with some ease. Not much resistance out there. And on the floor for Nick Nurse as we get into the second half. Martin is out there with Joel Embiid. Then there's Lowry. Then there's Oubre. And it's Harris in at the three slot. Embiid kicks to Harris. Embiid with a screen on George. Harris passes to Embiid. Intimidating move by Embiid. It's a great move, and he catches the defense completely off guard. Well, just ripping through right there as he finds the open spot and gets right through there. High basketball IQ play. And we have an intentional foul there, G.A. I uh, wish I could say why. <laughs> that was pretty strange. I mean, no idea what got into his head right there. And the Clippers call time here. Some changes for Philadelphia. Robert Covington's checked in for Martin. De'Anthony Melton comes in for Oubre. And Maxi subbed in for Kyle Lowry. And B the screen. Maxi passes to Embiid. Rim rocker Joel Embiid. Domination, plain and simple. Embiid isn't holding back and is giving the defense all he's got. A shot by Harden. Wide open. Carries it from three point range. Harden's got 17. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up got to fight over it as a defender. That's one that the coaches will watch tomorrow with that player. You hate to see him give up in that situation. What a scary sight. Joel Embiid with all that momentum taking it to the hoop. Looking like a freight train. It's George on the wing. Defended by Covington to the paint. Embiid with the steal. Pushing it up. And Covington gets it to go on the assist by Embiid. And now a 5.76ers lead. Man passes to George. Passes it to Tucker. Dishes it to Hart. Six on the shot clock. Tucker finds Harden. Stuff. Great job by Harden recognizing the clock ticking down and getting that one off in time. George against Maxi. Just over two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's on Kawhi Leonard. And you don't ever want to get into the habit of letting the offense get to the rim. Maxi hits them both. You can tell he's feeling confident right now at the line. And when he's on, he can be lights out. Harden against Melton. Harden kicks to Leonard. Inside, man, nice pass, nice catch, and a resounding dunk. I like to see Leonard's ability to dish the ball off the screen and roll. It's becoming a huge advantage for this team. Maxi against George. Maxi into the lane. Second chance shot. Nobody near Milton. That's in, coming off the assist from MB. Embiid's got three assists now in this one. Leonard the pass to Harden. Leonard with a screen on Melton. Melton against Harden. Kicks it to Tucker. Shoots over Melton. Rebound by Joel Embiid. Embiid's got four rebounds in this game. Maxi against George. Outside, Maxi. Driving in. Here's Embiid. Nice move. And Embiid throws it down. And right there, Embiid showing he's just too big and too skilled to stop. 
here's Harden, and it's Harden shutting it down. And this is how a floor leader makes a statement. Harden just put the other team on notice. Maxi against George. Maxi attacking and slam dunk by Maxi. Total letdown by the D. Can't leave the bucket unprotected. Absolutely. And it attacks an easy two points onto the lead. Will not find a higher percentage opportunity than that. And the dunk by Embiid. And seeing a guy as big as Embiid being so fluid in terms of his movement, jaw drop. Leonard sets a screen for George, lets it go from deep, sinks the triple. George has got 12 in the game. I tell you what, what a good thing that he showed up today because without him, this thing would already be over. And so it's Philadelphia bringing the quarter to a close with a seven point lead. They're and while we can, now uh, let's take a look at today's State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with his feet. They had no chance to prevent that basket. That's what great passing will do for you right there, dissecting the defense with that play. The fourth quarter has arrived. So good to have you with us. And while we've got a moment, let's send it over to our terrific reporter, David Aldridge. David? Hey, guys. During the last time out, I listened to Nick Nurse talk to his team. He reminded his team, we're up. All the pressure is on them. Let's just keep playing our game. Makes sense because they've got a nice lead late in this game. Back to you guys. Thank you, David. We've got George. Kawhi Leonard is out there with P.J. Tucker. Then it's Harden, and it's Mann in at the three. That's who's out there for the Clippers. Here's George, out to the right wing. Leonard with a screen on Maxi. Man can hit. The 76ers leading by nine. And the foul call on Kawhi Leonard. That's his third foul of the game. First team foul. Here's Maxi. Covington setting the pick for Maxi. Here he goes, and slam dunk by Maxi. And credit the screen for giving him the space he needed to get to the rim. For sure, GA allows him to come in with the sledgehammer. Yeah, we'll have to settle for the layup when you can attack the rim and rise up like that. George against Maxi. In the corner, Reed with it. It's Covington on the wing. Shot clock at six. Maxi on the wing. Guarded by Harden. Then the shot clock expires. 24 second violation. About a minute and a half into the fourth quarter now. George finds Harden. That ball, nice speed that time from George. got 26. Nice play, George, creating for others, just manufacturing some points. And Philadelphia calls time here. And during this timeout, I'm sure they'll be hydrating themselves with Gatorade. All the effort out there on the floor, and these timeouts can be such a huge factor in getting a short rest and recharging the battery. Embiid, he's checked in for Reed. Oh, and a jam by Embiid! And it's no secret that Embiid enjoys the spotlight. When he gets a chance to show off some, he seizes it. Harden against Melton. Leonard the pass to George. Leonard sets a screen for George. And another three for the Clippers. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Yeah, pretty infectious right here, guys. In good spirits and percentages from downtown on the rise in the second half. To the middle. Embiid kicks to Melton. Back to Embiid. And the dunk by Embiid. Well, recognizing the size mismatch and then turns it into an easy basket there. They've got to do a better job with defensive help. Here's Tucker. And again, Los Angeles with the... 
And P.J. Tucker ready for the big one. Maxi against George. And MB throws it down. This whole second half, he's been unbelievable scoring the basketball. The defense has had literally no effect. On the wing, George. Leonard with a screen on Covington. George dishes to Leonard. Six to shoot from deep heart. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. They've led by as many as 11 points. And Bede sets the pick for Maxi. And slam dunk by Maxi. And so the coach's challenge here comes into play. The coach protesting the personal foul call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able to. A challenge like this is something a lot of people have done. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in it. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video reviews showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. And on an open look like that, he's very gifted at making the weak coverage pay. Inside, stolen by Harden. They push it up for on three. The three from George. Los Angeles with another miss. Philadelphia leading by eight. Harris finds Melton. Maxi against George. And there's Embiid. That's good on the assist by Maxi. Embiid's got 26 points. Kicks it out to Leonard. Shoots the three. Good for the fifth time in five shots. He remains perfect. So many of the plays they're running designed to create opportunities from deep. And I don't know how they keep doing this, but every time down, the resulting possession ends up at the three-point line and a fairly efficient shot attempt at that. Making every effort to put this game on ice. Love that the guys are staying aggressive late in this ball game, just not wanting to let go of the rope. As to George, Covington with a steal. Shot clock and game clock separated by less than six seconds. Stolen by Tucker. Leonard on the wing. George with the ball. Now Covington defending. George passes to Leonard. Covington with a steal. Now Embiid.
from the same conference. Ooh, I like a little spice. But remember, only one team per conference gets to the final. So that's going to naturally develop some rivalries here and there. So tonight should be a really competitive game. And now the opening lineup for New York. We've got OG Ananobi, Julius Randle out there with Achua, and it's Josh Hart, and it's Brunson in at the point guard position. At seven feet tall, Embiid looks to dunk often, especially when he's got good position. Here's Hart driving in, and the layup is good. Hart's gotten his second bucket of the game. Just taking it right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. And I think defensively, that is not the way you want to start. Giving up high percentage looks, that doesn't typically end well. Embiid misses. Well, you got to miss sometimes, but that one seemed like a gimme. Pass to Brunson. Stolen by Melton. Harris passes to Embiid. Got it. Good job in the low post. Yeah, getting aggressive in the paint. Look at Joel putting his size to work. We played just over a minute here in the first. Randall finds Brunson, and he drives in. That's in. Coming off an assist from Randall. Such a multi-talented threat on the offensive end, and you love his confidence. And this summer, the Sixers making changes on the bench. Grant, the mission statement is clear. Make it past the conference semifinals. Oh, so clear, B.A. And while that's been the stumbling block in recent years, I'm not sure even that's good enough. This is a team with legitimate championship aspirations. He was all alone on that one. Yeah, Julius Randle has a good feel on the offensive end, on time and on target with the pass. Embiid, a screen on Ananobi. Melton passes to Embiid. Buries it from three. Embiid's got nine. Defensively, you have to stay connected to him on the perimeter. Pass to Randall. Takes it inside. And it's Randall with the jam. We know that Julius Randall loves to put it on the deck. Off the dribble drive, boy, he can be tough to deal with. Screen by Embiid. Here's the floater. The shot, no good. Oh, nice D from Ananobi. Randall a screen on Maxi, and here's Brunson from the arc. Perfect night so far, two for two. One of the things you love about Jalen Brunson, he takes quality shots. How about that look from three? Embiid a screen on Ananobi. Maxi attacking, and he goes in for the dunk. Just disrespectful. If the D gives him a clear path to the hoop, he will take it. Let's just say they were a little slow to react there. Yeah, and despite his restrictions offensively, you still have to close off the lane or he'll burn you. And play stops. A whistle there on what looks like an illegal screen. The screener was leaning a bit right there. His feet may not have been planted. Pretty obvious call by the officials. You know, he's just leaning a little bit. You try to get away with it, but boy, the official all over it. Lowry, he's checked in for Tyrese Maxey. Achua finds Hart. Hart with a screen on Harris. Ananobi. And it's New York with another. Just under three and a half minutes elapsed here in the first quarter. Embiid, a screen on Hart. To the paint. And Embiid throws it down. But Kyle Lowry has become the master of manipulating the pick and roll. Really pretty look there. <laughs> Attacking the rim with power. Tremendous finish. Embiid, a screen on Hart. Lays it up and banks it in. Well, you get exactly what you want right there. Clean look right at the cup. Nicely done. Randall against Covington. Randall a screen on Melton. And here's Brunson from the arc. And again, New York with the triple. Yeah, just masterful use of the pick and roll by Jalen Brunson. Shot ready as soon as he wants to let it fly. Embiid a screen on Hart. Lowry the pass to Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. And both teams already firing on all cylinders. Yeah, this is already a high scoring game, but we knew that was a possibility coming into this one. Now here's Hart. And Kyle Lowry is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul. Personal foul. First team foul. Randall a screen on Melton. Brunson with it, guarded by Covington. 
Randall can't hit. Well, you can see why the defense dared him to shoot it. That's not really his spot. Shot and game clock separated by five. Achua into the lane. Randall, the pass to Brunson. And denied! He sends it right off the glass. And here's Harris outside. And the rebound goes to the Knicks. Pass to Hart. Achua with it. Back to Hart. Launches it. The shot that time not on target. It's been all about Jalen Brunson for New York. Eight points in the quarter, showing how effective he can be. More NBA on 2K Sports. And thanks again for tuning in. If you're just joining us, we played through one quarter of action so far. And a moment now to quickly take a look at the offensive approach for the Knicks. Man, I'll say this. I mean, the mid-range jumper has been a huge weapon for them offensively. Just tremendous so far. And the other thing I love, how they're making the extra pass. They're not settling for the first shot. They're going from good to great. So on the floor for New York, we've got Julius Randle. Jalen Brunson is out there with Josh Hart. Then there's Precious Achua, and it's Ananobi in at the three spot. Hart with a screen on Harris. And Ananobi gets it to go. Ananobi's got six. Uh, you can see the confidence growing daily. OG Ananobi trusting that jumper. Harris, a screen on Ananobi. Maxi with it. And it's Ananobi picking him up. And here's Harris outside. Pure from three-point range. Harris has gotten himself going here. His first point of the game on the deep ball. Pass to Ananobi. Achua with a screen on Melton. And here's Brunson. Here's Achua. Ananobi with it. Melton covers. Clock at four. Releases. The kick out to Brunson. Hard against Maxi. To the inside. Ananobi. And he caught that pass in full stride on his way to the big slam. Now let's remember this is six foot eight with some hops. OG Ananobi with the dunk. And Philadelphia calls time here. And the 76ers with some changes. Embiid comes in for Reed. And it's Ubre in for Melton. DiVincenzo, he's checked in for New York. Well, when Josh Hart gets going, his confidence skyrockets, Grant. That seems to be the key for him. Well, his floor game is special regardless. I mean, the rebounding and defense are his bread and butter, B.A. And when he's hitting shots, he becomes the complete package on the wing. Took the opportunity when he saw it. Steven Chinzo's gotten himself going with a triple. His first basket of the game. Here's Maxi. It's tipped. Side Hart. Over to the left wing. Brunson finds Randall. And the layup is good off the glass. And it's a nine-point New York lead. Boy, I love the confidence Julius Randall has in himself. This guy knows what it takes to score. Good on the bucket. Maxi's got six. It's very difficult to slow him down defensively, especially when you have communication problems. For three. Offensive rebound. Boy, that foul looked intentional. Not exactly what you'd expect here. Yeah, no, it just doesn't make sense, given the situation. And Philadelphia calls time here. And some changes here for the 76ers. Reed's checked in for Embiid. Heald comes in for Tobias Harris. And it's Melton in for Oubre. Sims, he's checked in for New York. Burks comes in for Hart. Randall's got room. Basket is good. Off the assist from Brunson. Give him eight. Well, as always, Jalen Brunson making the right play. This guy loves to set up his teammates. Heald from outside. Another three for Philadelphia. So, Grant, if you were a GM and you could choose one young player to build around, who would it be? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, PA, I, I think you have to go with Victor Wimbanyama. 
I know he's a young fella. He just got drafted. But the upside is so huge for this young man. His talent, his skill, his size. He is the next iteration of Kevin Durant, in my opinion. And I would go with him. He's got a lot of runway in front of him. A lot of years to get better, get stronger, and to win championships. Well, Heald always has the green light from behind the arc. This guy's so efficient. And Burks gets it to go. And the Knicks lead by seven. That's been the story of their offense so far. Getting a number of looks from point blank range. And the jam by Covington. And just a lack of fight right now on the defensive end. Right? At least on that slam it was. That's one way to let a team back in the game. Right. You can see on that possession, one side playing with a little desperation, the other side losing focus. Oh, I didn't think that was going in. Heald's got nine points in the quarter. Buddy Heald from another galaxy. Wow, that was deep. Randall a screen on Maxi. Burks for three. Oh, my goodness! He'll go to the line with a chance at a four-point play. On Robert Covington. You know, Doris, looking at this current Knicks team, you think they are poised for a big run? Well, if you look back at their history, the Knicks have had a lot of players past their prime. This version of the Knicks is a lot younger, and I like what they've done with their roster. So are they poised for a big run? We'll see. Now a timeout called by Philadelphia. And some changes here for the 76ers. Joel Embiid, he's checked in for Reed. Martin comes in for Covington. And it's Kyle Lowry in for Tyrese Maxey. Lowry surveys the D. Pass to Embiid. Whoa, Embiid with the slam! Uh, the consistency with which Kyle Lowry involves his teammates is really a sight to behold. This guy's such a good passer. DiVincenzo pass to Achua. Bogdanovich from long range. Philadelphia grabs the miss. Outside heel. Up top, Embiid. Embiid is screen on DiVincenzo. And the shot goes in. And now it's just a two-point New York lead. Well, the ability to stay nimble on the dribble drive. Buddy Heald making a nice adjustment there. DiVincenzo, pass to Bogdanovich. Achua with a screen on Martin. And the first half comes to an end. We've got a close game going here. Knicks out in front. Up by two. Appreciate it, Ali. And we'll be coming right back after this break. Ready for the third quarter. We're halfway through this one. Plenty of basketball left in a game that's been a fairly even one. What else can you say? Joel Embiid, an impressive effort here today. You just love his patience offensively in the first half. Waited until he got the looks he wanted. You know, as a coach, you can preach good shot selection, but it's up to the players to execute, and this guy has done just that. Kenyon Martin is out there with Buddy Heald. Then there's Kelly Oubre. Then it's Maxi, and it's Embiid in it to five, roaming the paint. That's the group in the game to the 76ers. You can really see their confidence growing as this game has gone on. They have reason to believe that. What I love is the heart, the fire, the tenacity. This is absolutely fantastic. It seems you could bring in anybody to this team and pair them with Embiid, and they'd still win, Greg. Oh, they got a solid roster. But there's no denying that Embiid is the heartbeat of this team. The 76ers go how Embiid goes, kind of like our broadcast with you. And in the last five seasons, they've gone to the playoffs. There's a lot to like about Bogdanovich's game. He's a skilled scorer, he's a capable defender, and I think there's some leadership qualities there. Back to Embiid. with the dunk. Yeah, good things happen when Embiid has the ball in his hands. I mean, this guy can do it all. Pass to Burks. Bogdanovich with a screen on Maxi. Now here's Bogdanovich. No good from outside. And if you're just joining us, we play just over a minute here in the third. Here's Oubre. Embiid with it. Maxi on the wing. There's the drive. 
uses the glass on the layup. Maxie's got eight points. Probably a play they drew up in the locker room at half. Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific start right there. Here's Embiid. Oh, that was pure. He's got another one. Now 10 for 12. Well, this guy has made giant strides in his plane making. Nice setup by Buddy Heald right there. Here's Burks. And that one drops. Give him eight. And Maxie's got the ball here for the 76ers. Two-point game. Inside, Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. Size, explosion. He's a dangerous finisher. And we saw it right there. Bogdanovich, no good. And this is exactly who you want taking that shot. He just missed it. Oubre passes to Maxi. Embiid is screen on Bogdanovich. Maxi attacking. Here's Embiid. And count the basket. He, and coach doesn't like the call at all. He's opting to use his challenge. He wants the officials to look at the replay. People were worried that this would slow the action down. That's his play, his foul. Smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're one substitution on the court. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. Here's Brunson outside. Ooh, Brunson, the sweet lefty stroke. Jalen Brunson right now attacking without hesitation. His foot is on the gas pedal. Embiid, a screen on Hart to the left side wing. And there's Embiid. That one's good. And the assist from Lowry. Embiid's got 11 points in the quarter. Brunson finds Randall. Back to Brunson. Up top, Randall. Covered by Covington. Randall, a screen on Harris. Pass to Brunson. Down to five on the shot clock. Down low. Here's Randall. A little under three and a half minutes off the clock now in the third quarter. Beats the shot clock, but can't get it to fall. Lowry, the pass to Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. He is the story for them offensively. And a big reason why they're ahead. And here's Achua. Oh, deflected. Here's Randall. And it's Randall with the jam. Wow, excellent explosion off his feet by Julius Randall. To the middle. Here's Embiid. Misses in close. Boy, in that close, he's almost automatic. Boy, that's pretty good defense. Wow. Achua with a screen on Covington. Hart from long range. And again, New York with the triple. Listen, this guy is not the most dangerous threat from there, but you have got to honor the shooting a little bit. Lowry, the pass to Embiid. Out to Lowry. Parked it down low that time. Got hit with the three-second call. Boy, that's the last thing they needed. This game too close to be making those kinds of errors. New York has gotten two of four threes to fall here in this third quarter. Brunson passes to Randall. 34 seconds left to play in the third quarter of basketball. And here's Brunson from the arc. Gets the three to fall. Brunson's got six points in the quarter. And this is how he shines. He's a big part of their floor spaces. And right now, Greg, he is doing a great job delivering for this team. Productive and efficient. Achua with a screen. Inside. Outside Hart. Back to Achua. The kick out to Brunson. Shot clock at six. 
Left side, Ananobi. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not sure why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Here's Brunson outside. Nails it from three. Brunson's got nine points here in the second half. What a confident stroke from Jalen Brunson. This guy doesn't have to dominate with the ball in his hands. Joel Embiid, he's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force. And a worthy candidate tonight as we take a look at our State Farm Assist of the Game. Woo, I'm fired up to see this dish one more time. It's always great to see your two guards share the wealth. Love the unselfishness, finding the best look, and it doesn't matter who's taking it. Three tense quarters behind us. One more to go. Thanks for being with us as we get ready for the fourth. So on the floor for the Knicks. Randall and Hartenstein together down low. Josh Hart is out there with Jalen Brunson and Tananobi in at the small forward. How about that well-timed drop-off? Jalen Brunson just knows where to put the basketball. For three, Maxi. Hart pulls it in. And for New York, their shooting has been spectacular. 67%. Just incredible. Randall outside. Hartenstein a screen to take the lead. Another one falls for New York. Well, the effectiveness of Julius Randle, wherever he is on the floor, the mid-range, one of those tools in the toolbox. And Harris throws it down. He's having a good night from the field. Now, I know the defense is really keen in on him, but they need him involved if they're going to pull this out. And there's the foul. It's on Joel Embiid. That'll be a second foul of the game. And the Knicks making a change here. Now, Chew has checked in. A few possessions into the fourth. Just over a minute play. Brunson against Melton. Randall on the screen. Here's Brunson outside. And the Knicks, another three. Boy, has Jalen Brunson come into his own as a scorer. Shots just come from anywhere. Here's Maxi. Oh, and that one, no question. Powered it down. Away from Dude, he risked pulling the whole thing down to the floor right there. Ananobi passes to Randall. Achua with a screen on Melton. Brunson to the basket. It's good. Boy, Jalen Brunson just reads what the defense concedes, and on that one, it's a drive. For three, Maxi. The Knicks pull it in. Achua's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Here's Ananobi. Oh, and he brings it down with a two-handed jam. Man, you can feel the temperature rising in this arena. Both teams pouring it on offensively. There's been a bit of a flurry here late, and this game may come down to which side gets a stop or two. Maxi passes to Embiid, and there's the foul. It'll go on Precious Chua. That's his first foul. And just wasn't able to set up in time. Here's Melton. Pass to Covington. And he floats it in for the easy two. Credit the sweet setup on that one. Since Covington has arrived in the league, he has come such a long way in his overall game. Great interior work there. Here we go. The Sixers on the break. You've got to give him credit for jumping on the ball and making the most at the other end. Boy, inexcusable at this point of the game. they got to be more composed in these moments. Boy, in a tight game like this, that can change the whole tone. It helps your opponent get into a little bit of a rhythm. Knocked loose. Randall finds Achua. Six to shoot. And it's blocked by Embiid. Now you have to be aware of Embiid at all times. He's an outstanding shot blocker. Martin, he's checked in for the Sixers. Lowry comes in for Maxi. 152 left in the game. Shot clock at two. Brunson misses. And Embiid has got the ball here for the 76ers. And there's the foul. It'll go on Julius Randle. That's his first foul of the game. And there's a minute 45 left in the final quarter. Screen by Embiid. And it's Lowry penetrating. Oh, he misses the go-ahead basket. New York has gone one for three in the fourth quarter from range. And that one's good for Brunson. Jay, 
Jalen Brunson wants the ball in these moments, and there he shows you why. Big time shot. Embiid, a screen on Hart. And a throw the foul. He'll head to the line for two. The defense there doing whatever they can to protect the rim. And a moment to check out the scoring breakdown for the Knicks. Well, they have owned the offensive perimeter throughout this game, finding lots of openings and turning them into big shots. And the other thing, guys, credit their game plan. They've been getting the looks they want, and they are executing at a high level. To the inside. Achua with the dunk. What you see is continued improvement in his ability to create for others. Great to see OG Ananobi make the open read. And the three-pointer goes. The very definition of clutch. Kyle Lowry rises to the occasion. Brunson passes to Randall. Now Brunson, pounded by Harris. Back to Achua. Oh, from deep. Side Hart. Pass to Ananobi. Achua with a screen on Melton. And the stakes were high right there. What a bucket. I'll tell you, that changes things, doesn't it? Good job, young fella. What a game. Embiid, a screen on Hart. Lowry, the pass to Embiid. Money! And that one brings him within one. These are the moments Embiid loves enjoys being the player for this team to take and make clutch shots. Here's Randall. Oh, he nails it! That's about trusting your guy in the clutch. Julius Randall embracing a tough opportunity. Embiid, a screen on Hart. Lowry, the pass to Harris. To the occasion, more and more you can lean on Harris in these situations. And they foul intentionally. Now they're going to have to do that again. They're not in the penalty just yet. And a smart choice right there. I mean, you can't allow them to just drain the clock. And he commits the intentional foul. That's his second personal foul. Good on the first, and that'll put him up two. With as much as Brunson handles the ball, he's going to find himself at the line in these key situations. A bit of heroics at the line right there as he bumps their lead to three and makes things a little easier for them defensively. And Philadelphia calls time here. They're trailing by three. Just four seconds left in the game. All right, guys, what do you think? They should have a play prepared for this scenario. Little time, need a three. Of course, the D will be guarding the line, but no one said it was going to be easy. Pass to Martin. From 13, and he cans that one. Coach is loving the ball move. 